Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Lotus Tile Tarot coming at you with another pick a card reading. Today we are exploring a request that I sort of embellished on and took inspiration from another tarot reader actually on Instagram. If you're interested in looking at her post, she is lovely. Her name is actually Lotus T Tarot and she is absolutely wonderful. Her name is Harry. Um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend checking it out. I will link the post below, but this is about the right versus the wrong person for you. So there was a request to explore the right love for you or the person you should go for and I wanted to sort of expand on that because I didn't want to make it super specific to third party situations. It can absolutely be that. It can be between two options in love but this could also be singles out there or people in relationships that are just curious if they're with the right person, right? Well, um, but this could be for singles from the perspective of, you know, when I get back into the dating scene, who should I be on the lookout for? you know? Um, so yeah, I wanted to leave it a bit more open-ended. So I hope that's okay uh, <laughs> to the person that asked for this. I hope it's still helpful and applicable to you. I tried definitely to make it applicable to everybody. So anyway, we have four piles to choose from today. So the first pile, we have the red carnelian, the second pile, we have the Black Moonstone. Third, we have the Raw Rose Quartz. Ooh, the Raw Rose Quartz is trying to move around on me. Um, and finally, in the shadows over here is the Orange Calcite trying to hide. <laughs> right. So... Take as much time as you need to meditate over the four piles, and I will see you at your reading. All right, see you soon. Hello, beautiful pile one. If you were drawn to the red carnelian, and this is going to be your reading today, and we are looking at the right person versus the wrong person for you. Keep in mind, this is a general reading, so not everything can resonate. Also, I am not trying to force you to be with any one specific person. I'm just kind of letting you know spiritual guidance on who spirit believes is the actual right person for you as opposed to the wrong. Um, this can be applied to a third party situation if you find yourself sort of between two options, or it can just be guidance for you for a future partner you know maybe you're tired of being with the same kind of partner and you're at a loss for who the right per person is for you so without further ado let's hop right into this reading we are going to look at you first so that i can kind of understand what the two options are and and how you fit into a relationship with them so we're going to do an energy check for you an energy check for the two options and then we will look at the tarot for uh, what the two relationships would be like and why the, the right option is the right one for you and the wrong one is the wrong one <laughs> and then we'll get into numbers letters and charms at the end but let's hop into it so the first card we have coming out is the camel so fire energy coming out for your energy first uh you could be a fire sign so leo aries and sagittarius is definitely here. This could be your sun or your moon is coming through very specifically as well with that blue moon in the background. Maybe blue moon is something that's significant for you, whether that's the beer or that is the actual, uh, the blue moon that happens uh, or even the song possibly. But yeah, fire energy is indicated here. So is water energy actually, because the camel in this deck represents combining the two opposing elements of fire and water you may be someone who uh sagittarius is coming through very strongly for me you may be somebody who really enjoys to travel uh enjoys traveling i should say you enjoy traveling maybe you travel for work i could see someone here you know being sort of nomadic maybe they are almost a bit afraid to put down roots maybe that's sort of against your nature in a way like i get a freedom 
loving energy from the camel. You're somebody who's also very resourceful. So I am wondering if maybe you grew up in an environment where things were not always super stable. It doesn't have to be bad. It could be. And I, I am sorry if, you know, you had a really tough childhood. I'm sending you so much love and I, I hope you're healing and and doing well. I do get the sense, though, that regardless of, of what happened and why it happened, I do feel like it shaped you in this way to, like I said, be a bit nomadic. Um, you know, you're somebody who takes any situation and makes makes a good one out of it as well. Somebody who um, is kind of an alchemist in your own right. Like... Or even, I don't know, I, I'm seeing something with crafts, so so bear with me here. But Spirit keeps showing me this image of a person at a craft table, and they're taking things, and it's kind of like, you know, um, people who go antique hunting, and they take old antiques and they turn them into something modern, something beautiful. I'm getting like the Little Mermaid a little bit as well, but I was seeing somebody at a craft table taking somebody's you know, trash and turning it into treasure. So I don't know if that's something that interests you, but I could see this being applied to situations as well. And so what I mean by that is, you know, maybe you've had a lot of tough situations growing up and, you know, instead of letting that jade you in some way, which it, it's totally understandable if there is a part of you that's upset by this, I feel like your energy, though, leans towards that Sagittarian Jupiter optimism where you are sort of always looking at the bright side of things. I'm wondering if you actually might have struggled with toxic positivity in moments with yourself, um, if you maybe leaned into that. But I'm getting that that's been tempered for you as well. Like, I just feel like you have a very good outlo outlook on things. I was going to say, I think you look for the silver linings of things. The song Mr. Brightside by The Killers is coming through very strongly in my head. But going back to what I was saying, yeah, I, I did get a download of The Little Mermaid um, with her cave of, you know, treasures <laughs> that are just random things. Like, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Um, yeah, you, you could kind of have that energy of sorts where you're yeah like I said always trying to look for the beauty in the simple things look for the beauty in situations where most people might not find much I think you're looking for the good in people in general even though you could have been treated badly in the past you know you could have grown up in a home where things were really unstable and you were constantly moving you know I feel like you could have taken that energy and made it into something that was fun and adventurous and beautiful for you. Maybe not at the time, but as an adult, maybe you feel that need to constantly move. And so that just keeps coming through. So I wanted to make sure to talk about that. I do get a fierce independence from you as well. And I also think, Pile One, you are somebody who... Like, you just really know who you are at this point, you know? You're somebody who... You're very... Like I said, you are very independent. Self-reliance is coming through. Maybe you're hyper-independent even. But there is this just knowingness of who you are. You're not trying to kid yourself. You know, you're never... Trying to mask any of your shadow and you're also not trying to dim any of your light you know there's something very beautiful about your eyes um like i'm getting somebody that always has a sort of twinkle in their eye maybe somebody has said that to you <laughs> like there's there's something sparkly about your eyes maybe you like to wear sparkly eyeshadow if you wear makeup but yeah i do get the sense that you know you do have this like i said in the beginning this very fiery nature and also this very watery nature at the same time. It's very steamy and sultry and seductive. And it's also, you know, <laughs> you have this fun, explosive, adventurous side, that fire energy. But you also have this capacity to be very calm and content and 
emotional, very deep, uh, very wise. Very, there's something about being very responsible for your reactions to things. Like, again, there's a balance here. You know, you you are the first one to admit fault about things. Like, you are willing to take accountability in a way that not very many people around you might be. There is something I will say also about uh, please, please stay hydrated. I feel the need to say that um, it, with camel being the an, the kind of animal that it is. I'm thinking about its hump and that's where it keeps all the water for these long travels and uh, just make sure that you're taking care of yourself, keeping yourself hydrated. Maybe this is a good time for you to take a drink. Um, maybe that's something that you you struggle with. You, I could totally see you being somebody that carries this huge water bottle around and it's it's, it's something that you have to be very conscious about. Um, like, I could see your friends being like, hey, have you had a drink yet? Because <laughs> your water bottle's still full at the end of the day. And you're like, oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> Excuse my language, but... All right, so we are going to look at the rest of your energy check. So let's see what else we got here. So we've got, ooh, 10th house Capricorn energy coming through now. So... VIP access. I love that. All right. Public image, reputation, career, long-term goals, fame, recognition, ambition, respect, achievement, honors, success, potential, and authority coming through for you. So maybe your son is in the 10th house. So maybe you have like a fire son, but it is in the 10th house. So you have that Capricorn kind of energy at the forefront of your natal chart. You don't have to. You could also be a Capricorn sun or 10th house ener energy could just really be embodying who you are at this current moment. You know, maybe you are stepping into public rec recognition in some way. You know, you could be a fellow YouTuber. <laughs> you know, you could be somebody who is on social media sharing your work and you're starting to get that fame and recognition. And I definitely get the sense that wherever you go, people do stop. They look at you. They do wonder about your I, I keep hearing clout they wonder about you know what you do they feel like they are in the presence of someone who is famous or who is about to come famous about to become famous I just saw the movie poster for almost famous with Kate Hudson I believe it's Kate Hudson right when she was younger anyway maybe that movie is significant to you I feel like there's just, there's something about you that screams authority and, and fame, I, I mean, genuinely. Like, even if you aren't there yet, I, I feel like that's your energy. People, people will never forget you. That's for sure. You are unforgettable. <laughs> um, so... It's really, that's really lovely. Let's see what else we have. So we've got dream travel with the number 52 on it. So, all right. Interesting. So I feel like, are you somebody who... Mm, Maybe you are somebody who is a fellow tarot reader online or maybe that's your dream to do that. And if it is, Spirit is definitely encouraging you to do this because I do think it is the career path that your soul was led here to to journey on. You know, camels are all about the long journey. And I feel like, you know, maybe it's taken you a long time to really come to this full grasp and understanding of who you are but maybe you're starting to realize oh this is what I'm meant to do maybe you astral project quite a bit and you're learning how to hone that or maybe you just get a lot of downloads in your dreams I could see you definitely being somebody who is very spiritual no matter what it is that you do it doesn't have to be what you do for work though I could see that being the case for some people here it could also just be with dream travel here that you are spiritual and your spirituality is something that 
you know, you are very tethered to, you know, you do listen to your intuition and you do let that guide you. And that's part of the success that you do usher in for yourself. It's because you are following your instincts, your intuition. You're taking full accountability and responsibility for yourself. Spirit's very proud of you. There's a lot of pride coming through. Not like you are uh, struggling with an overabundance of pride, but that spirit is coming through with this well of pride for you. Mm, Maybe somebody here is actually speaking of pride. When I'm releasing this, it will be Pride Month. And so happy Pride Month to everybody. But maybe you are part of the LGBTQ plus community. So that could be a thing. Maybe that's part of your dream as well. Maybe you are very famous within that community because you do some pivotal work for that community, which is beautiful. And thank you so much for that. And only take it if it resonates. But yes, I do believe that spirit definitely, regardless of any of that, sends you a lot of downloads while you're asleep. And I think you've become very adept at deciphering that and following those those nuggets of wisdom that are being sent your way while you are asleep. Somebody here could be a life path seven, life path five or a life path two is coming through as well. See what else we've got here. We've got rest. So, yeah, definitely someone who you're a hard worker with this 10th house, but I think you are somebody who is very balanced, who understands the importance and not just the importance of rest, but the absolute necessity of it. You know, you are very resourceful from, you know, like I said, being able to take things and repurpose them to being able to conserve your energy. Camels are great at this. They know when to pause. They know when to keep walking. They know how much water to conserve. You could be somebody who is very environmentally conscious. But with rest, I do get the sense that you also know when it is time to, like I said, take a breather, take a rest. And this coming out with dream travel definitely gives me the sense that, yeah, you get so many downloads while you're sleeping. (laughs) Um, Astral projection is definitely a psychic gift of yours. And if you haven't started writing down a dream journal, spirit is asking you to do that. Because it will help you in your career in some way. Whether it's in letting you know when to make a move or what move to make or where, which way to go. There's something that is being missed at, possibly in dreams. And if you've already been doing this, then spirit is just saying continue to do this. But with rest also, you are someone who always looks very well rested. People like this about you. All right. The last card that we have is the heart card. So lovely. 31 coming through now. So interesting. (laughs) With 31 coming through, somebody could be 31. Maybe somebody's born on the 31st of any month. I'm seeing this as 3331 as well. So maybe you're seeing like 331 a lot of the time, like as a time quite a bit. But when we add up these digits, so 3331, we get the number 10 again. So 10 is very significant. Maybe you're seeing the time 1010, which is Spirit's way of saying that maybe there is a, not maybe, that there is a new beginning on the horizon for you that there is an ending a chapter that's closing out so that a new chapter can come in maybe yeah maybe you have been on a long journey with yourself and discovering yourself and being independent and so maybe you're walking towards a new relationship something that's very stable you know it looks like there are two people in a boat together rowing which is lovely and there's the the little ruby in the nest Ruby is 
a gemstone that could be significant to you. Uh, but also, for me, it's about sensuality. It's about sexual desire. So this is definitely letting you know that you are really waking up. Perhaps you're having a major heart awakening right now. Maybe you've been letting go a lot of the things. Maybe you've been going through a heart awakening where you're letting go of a lot of the things that happened to you in your past. Because I was getting that some of you might have had a really heavy past where you were moved a lot and you just didn't really have a stable, rooted home like other kids did. You know, maybe you could never really make friends because you were constantly moving schools and things like that. And now things are starting to settle and and I feel like you're finding somebody who I'm getting very much home is where the heart is. So I'm, I'm getting that you're finding someone who feels like home. Even if you continue to be nomadic, you're finding somebody who is going to echo that and, and accept that and let you be free while also being beside you, being somewhere soft for you to land that really does make you feel comfortable and loved with the heart. But I do feel like this heart space is really bursting open and letting all of this love in. The so song Let Love In by Goo Goo Dolls coming through. I have not heard that song in forever. So that's for someone, definitely. And yeah, I feel like that's exactly what you're doing. Letting It even looks like on this ruby, if I can get this card up, it almost looks like there are two rings connected there which is giving me the number eight or the infinity symbol the ouroboros two wedding rings you know you could be really walking into a relationship that becomes a marriage if that is something that you are looking for so that is what i have as far as your energy check goes let's look at the wrong person versus the right person for you so that we can help distinguish between those two because sometimes we need that all right, so we're going to start with the wrong person first, and then we will look at the right person, okay? So we've got the unicorn in reverse coming out for the wrong. I'm going to pull all these cards out. The orator, communication, and confidence. Success in the reverse. Perseverance. And finally, house one, individuality, self-image, and approach to life. So, interesting. Okay. So, we're going to talk about this one, and then we'll get your right person out as well. So, the wrong person. Okay, so how you'll know that it is the wrong person for you. The wrong person is going to be somebody who is very, very intuitively blocked with this unicorn card in the reverse. This is the card of the third eye chakra in the wild unknown deck i definitely get the sense this this is somebody who has been through a lot with perseverance here they could have sun in the eighth house it's okay if you don't know that <laughs> it's totally okay but they could have sun in the eighth house maybe they have sun in aries in the eighth house if you know the specifics of maybe an ex or somebody that you've been sort of back and forth on if you know their natal chart, that could be a sign for you. So that's just for somebody. But for everybody else, uh, this could be somebody who has persevered through a lot in their life. You know, they... I could definitely see you two relating on a very deeply emotional level. Things that you both went through. I'm seeing the six of cups in my head. You know, uh it's, it's almost giving me trauma bonding a little bit, to be completely honest with you, where, you know, I, I don't know if this is somebody that you have been through very, a uh, very tumultuous relationship with, because I haven't really looked deeply into the cards uh, as far as the tarot goes yet, but it could just be 
it, that could be a thing. It could also be that this is somebody who has been through similar trauma to you and you've talked about it. And so there is that trauma bond there in that regard as well. I feel like they have low self-confidence in general. They don't, they're afraid of success. They don't believe that they're worthy of success, but they may have a lot of bravado. They could be an actor with the orator here, communi communication and confidence in the upright here, but I actually get the sense that they have really, really low self-confidence and they have a hard time speaking authentically. This is no offense or shame on any Libra ascendant, but it is giving me this person could have a Libra ascendant. I have a Libra ascendant. So I just want to say that uh, this is giving me somebody who's not healed within that energy because part of what it means to be a Libra ascendant, the lifelong journey is to learn not to people please and to speak up and speak out and have an opinion on things, even if it does make other people upset, right? And I feel like this person may have a really hard time with that. Like, I think they could be an actor and they could gravitate toward acting because it sort of allows for them to release some of what they have been through, first of all. And it allows them to say things and act in a way that they wish that they could in their real life. I do see that they are a very mystical, magical, beautiful person, Pile One. And you could know this person. <laughs> and you could see their potential, but they don't see it. They are very, very blocked. I do think with house one being highlighted here that they struggle to, they struggle with self-concept. So this yellow color coming through is the solar plexus chakra for me. And I feel like that is something that's also very blocked up for them. Like it, they don't have a mind of their own. And this is something that they will have to journey through by themselves and face so that they can find their happily ever after, their Ten of Cups moment. But with success in reverse here, I don't feel like, I mean, I feel like Spirit is highlighting very obviously that a relationship with this person would not be successful for the two of you. Because I feel like this person would not know how to meet your authenticity and you were coming off as someone who's very very authentic i do think that you two would be very attracted to one another and i think that there could be a strong sexual desire i just glanced over and saw the red carnelian yeah there could be a lot of sexual desire for one another but i don't feel like outside of that there would be much for you to gain from this connection just to be fully transparent with you now we're going to look at the right person so the right person how will you know they're the right one well we've got the nightingale hmm <laughs> that's lovely all right we have the alchemist in reverse so balance invention and destruction so interesting all right We've got strength. We've got the hermit in reverse. Hmm. And we've got the north node. All right. So how will you know when you've met the right person. The right person for you is going to come off as somebody who, unlike this person on this side, the wrong person, the right person is going to come off very authentically. They are going to speak up 
quickly and without fear like or I shouldn't say without fear because I don't like that um I think we all have fear and you know saying things like oh just be fearless like no have courage instead right so I think that this person has courage and I feel like maybe this person very much uh, echoes that same sentiment and they could even talk to you about that that you know I'm scared all of the time but I have the courage to to be my authentic self in spite of that this is a person who could be uh, a musician possibly I'm getting air energy from them so they could be a Libra Aquarius or Gemini there's going to be something very beautiful and lilting about their voice. They may not be somebody who fits your normal type physically. I will say that. Or somebody that you might overlook initially because maybe you don't feel as like sexually or physically attracted to them right away. But I feel like it's not because they're not attractive. I do think that they're very attractive, but they might actually kind of try to hide themselves in moments or they just really have a low profile. They're very chill <laughs> is, is the energy that I'm getting. Uh, with the hermit in reverse, I think we kind of get this even further. You know, <laughs> this is somebody who could also have uh, Virgo placements. Maybe they have a lot of Mercury, like Virgo and Gemini in their chart, but yeah, with the hermit in reverse, it is somebody who could be a bit of an isolationist. Like they, they just really like to do their own thing. They don't need to be around people 24 seven. They could be very introverted. I'm getting heavy INTP, INTJ vibes from this person. They like their own company, uh, uh, in, incredibly so. They are someone who I will say is very intuitive as well, although they may not identify themselves that way they could be very logical and analytically driven they could be someone who is cerebrally very gifted they could be an actual genius <laughs> with the alchemist in reverse here i feel like this is somebody who has been sort of similar to yourself they've been through a lot in their life and you may not realize that upon first meeting them, but they have had to overcome a lot and they've been through a lot of deaths and rebirths. So some Scorpio energy coming through. I'm getting, they do know how to alchemize things. They are very similar to you in that way is what I was going to say before. They are very, very similar to you where they take situations that would normally break a person down, you know, and they don't allow for that to happen. They alchemize that into gold for themselves. And they they become rather unstoppable because of that. Now, I will say, with this alchemist being in the reverse, sometimes they can be a bit... In the past, I feel like specifically, and they still have to face this in moments, so just something to be aware of for yourself, they can be a bit uh, drawn to chaos. It's so interesting. They can be kind of on the chaos train in moments, and they will, I think, push themselves a bit too hard in moments so you may have to remind them to rest you may have to remind them sometimes to fully accept and heal from a situation because what I'm getting here is that they're very quick like I said to alchemize and move on from a situation and I feel like you are a good teacher for them, a good counterbalance because I feel like you are going to teach them how to not sulk or wallow in their you know misery so to speak but to fully process those things I feel like they don't always allow for that to happen because maybe they are a bit overproductive in moments to be completely honest like they're just trying to constantly grow with the north node being highlighted here yeah I think there's somebody who much like yourself is very motivated they're in like that 10th house kind of energy constantly trying to 
do what is best for their life, do what is best for their own growth and success. You know, this is destined to have. They could be, by the way, there's a dragon on this card looking over the mountains. And they could be year of the dragon, but with the dragon, I'm also getting very transformative energy. I'm getting somebody who's very abundant. You know, I think, like I said, they're very, very hardworking. I think Mountains do not scare this person. If anything, it excites them. But you, I think, will have to remind them that it's it's the lesson of the camel, right? It is important for us to be resourceful and to be realistic with ourselves. I think you are somebody who will be a great counterbalance. You could have a north node that's opposite of theirs. So maybe they are north node in Virgo and your north node is in Pisces or something like that. Like your north nodes are directly opposite to one another, which is really sweet because that means your south nodes, your comfort zones are opposite one another, which I think is actually a really beauty, beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> it's a really beautiful counterbalance to one another. So yeah. Um, and with strength here, I think that just further echoes what I was just talking about. I do feel like they are a very strong individual. If you heard that little uh, boop, 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 um, that was my computer, but uh, maybe that was a <laughs> confirmation for you. But yeah, you've met this person and you maybe you're very strongly attracted to them. But yes, this is also a person who, if you do know them, maybe you do know that they are a very strong person. And sometimes they feel like they like almost have to be the strong one, though. Like they're almost not allowed to be super emotional. And I feel like you will teach this person that it's okay for them to be emotional. And I think they will bring levity to your life. They will really in, uh, invigorate you is what I just heard. But also I feel like they will inspire you even more to embrace your authenticity which I think you already do a good job of but I think they will just further perpetuate that in your life with strength and being in the red color I do think honestly you will be strongly attracted to this person I think you will be attracted to them on more than just a physical level though like I do think it's going to be much deeper than that and you will have a very very strong bond in every way spiritually mentally physically emotionally you know, so yeah, but let's look at what it would be like to be in a relationship with these two and why spirit is saying, well, this is the right person and this is the wrong person a little more in depth. So this time we are going to look at the right person on top and then the wrong person on the bottom row of the two tarot decks. So the top tarot deck is going to be the Cosmic Slumber Tarot, and the bottom tarot deck is the Children of Litha. So, all right. First, let's get these cards out for you. So we've got, for why this is the right person for you, we've got the Queen of Torches. So the Queen of Wands in this deck for the right person coming out. So they think you are absolutely stunningly beautiful, first of all, and you will think that they are as well. The Queen of Pentacles, they will nurture you like no one's business. They are always going to take care of you. This could be, uh, again, you could be in the LGBTQ plus community. You do not have to be, but this could definitely be two women or a gay couple in general. It does not have to be, but just want to point that out. We have the Seven of Cups in reverse. They are never going to make you feel like they want to be with any other option because for them, there is no other option. You know, like they just want to be with you. They will never make you feel like they are wandering. They have a wandering eye. We've got the King of Swords. And finally, we have the Six of Swords. So there we go. All right. So, yeah, I mean, this is somebody that you can really trust, pile one. The reason that they're the right person for you is that 
yeah, you can totally trust this person. They can be, again, they have that nightingale energy. So they definitely, they speak the truth even when the truth is painful. Because they, they believe that it is ultimately the right thing to do. And maybe you've had a lot of people that tried to put you in some type of illusion or fantasy, you know, where they were selling you a dream, right? They were saying that, you know, oh yeah, I'll take care of you and you'll never, you'll never have to worry about me looking elsewhere. I would never do that to you. And it's like, no, you will be able to really trust this person because I feel like in the past, maybe that has not worked out and it ended up being exactly what you might have intuitively felt because I do think, you know, you are coming out as one of the witches of the tarot, the queen of torches, right, is is a witch here and and I mean that in a good way like a very beautiful way and I think your person is going to see that as something very beautiful about you you could be again someone who is coming through as very spiritual uh you know you could have magic in your fingertips is what I just heard I'm, I'm hearing the song every little thing she does is magic yeah it, you are so gorgeous inside and out to this person but someone that could you know, maybe you read tarot or you have spiritual practices of some kind. Spiritual gifts are highlighted here as well. And your person is going to love that. They're going to see that and they're going to love it. And you can trust them when they say that they love those things about you. They're not going to be threatened by those things. I feel like this is going to be a relationship that really transitions you out of wounding that has been around for a long time for you there's a person carrying a kid on their back I feel like yeah there was something coming through with I don't know if you had a really tough childhood where you were moved around a lot or there was just a lot of a lot of pain a lot of hardship it could have changed your self-concept as well you know the way that you think about who you are and the world around you could have been very dictated by your past when you were a kid, by the people who molded you, right? Your caretakers. But I feel like this person is coming in to help you heal. They're not going to obviously do the healing for you. And I don't feel like that's even what you want. I feel like you've been on this healing journey, to be completely honest. I feel like you've been nourishing and nurturing yourself. I feel like this person is a bonus. They come in and they... They help you take those next few steps. They help illuminate things that you never thought about before. They really help you change your perspective on self because of how they talk to you. I feel like this is going to be a words of affirmation person as well as an acts of service person. Someone who, and your physical relationship is going to be very good as well. But I do get like cerebrally they're going to help a lot. They are going to talk to you in a way that you've maybe never been talked to before. You know, saying things to you that you've always wanted to hear, you know, and I feel like that's really beautiful. They're going to really, really help you transition into a space where you're in love with life, you're in love with yourself, and you can depend on someone who really does love you and wants the best for you as well i'm getting a very nurturing energy here somebody who's very balanced as well heaven and earth here it's going to feel like heaven on earth a bit for the two of you so that's lovely all right what do we have for why what was the what's the wrong person like all right so what's it like with them the knight of wands and this is not to shame this person who's coming through as the wrong person for you, but just to kind of look and see why spirit is warning you against this one. We've got the king of pentacles in reverse. Ah, okay. Oh, <laughs> well, I meant to pull out this card, but we also saw the page of pentacles, but judgment. So interesting. Okay. The page of pentacles, like I said. And the Four of Swords. 
interesting that it ends on a sort of similar note and yet for me totally differently because the six of swords and the four of swords is different right obviously it's two different minor arcana but uh let's let's talk about it all right so the knight of wands i again i was getting that i feel like you are very sexually drawn to the wrong person and excuse my squeaky chair but i mean this makes total sense right i mean <laughs> i mm -hmm, yep been here done that um and i i mean that just to relate to you i think we've all been here where we're drawn to people who feel familiar this could feel very similar to to what you grew up around you know you're playing out maybe some of the same cycles in a way but this is someone who is exciting is very exciting and who does come off on the forward end of things as very confident. That is their ego coming through. Their ego makes them seem full of life. They're ready for a party. They're ready to travel with you and have a good time. But when it comes down to it, they're very greedy with... So you have the Queen of Pentacles with the King of Pentacles in reverse. I feel like the wrong person is going to be a karmic partner who possibly feels like a soulmate or a twin flame. And you could have already been through this. Maybe you've been through several cycles with this person and you've been waiting for them to become the right partner for you. The reason that they haven't become the right partner is because they're not. And I am so sorry if this is triggering or this feels like news to you if this is something that you maybe have not wanted to accept i totally understand that and again this is a tarot reading that is general so only take what resonates and know that i am not trying to dictate your life but i have to be honest with you this is what spirit is showing me they are showing me somebody who you might have felt like was your ride or die you know they've seen you through your worst times maybe you know you both had nothing at one point together you know like they they saw you at the bottom and you rose to the top kind of energy like but they didn't rise with you i feel like they've been riding your coattails i feel like you've been having to take care of them not just financially although that is indicated here i feel like they're very uh greedy with their money they could be very worried because maybe they grew up impoverished maybe the both of you grew up in poverty and maybe they're very afraid of that happening to them again and so they're just very greedy with their resources. So maybe you constantly have to pay for dates with them. You know, they want to take you out. They want to show you off, but they want you to pay for everything. They don't want to be an equal with you. This is also someone who I can see being very greedy with letting you in. Like they're only letting you see the surface of them. As soon as you start to get closer to them, they push you out. They are someone who is turning their back on the call. They know, like spirit is pushing them to evolve with judgment, but they are refusing because they're not ready. They want to be forever young with this page of pentacles. They have great ideas. They they have a lot of potential and i feel like that could be what you fell in love with or what you would fall in love with but i feel like ultimately it leads you to the point where you are healing from a three of swords moment because the four of swords comes after that right and i feel like you would find peace you would find growth but ultimately this would not end up being a fruitful relationship. You know, this is a solitary moth on the skull. And I feel like the skull is your relationship. But again, this is just spiritual guidance at the end of the day. So you do not have to take this as, I don't know, a... a me telling you that you have to to do anything with this information but i do want to let you know i feel like this person has a way of constantly sneaking back into your life 
and I feel like you do see so much good in them. You see so much, like I said, potential. Could it be somebody that you grew up with? Maybe not like you could have known them since you were a child, but you could have just, you know, done a lot of growing up with them. Even if you were both adults, like you could have both been 30 when you met each other, but it's like you both had growing up to do. But I feel like you did the work, right? You're the queen of pentacles, the queen of torches upright here. And, and I don't feel like with them being the king of pentacles in reverse, this is not somebody who's offering you stability. And I feel like if you wait for them, you'll be waiting forever is what spirit is kind of saying here. So we're going to look at numbers, letters, and charms. And I am going to look at that from... Hopefully the perspective of the right person. I That's my intention. So, all right. Let's see. So, numbers, letters, and charms for pile one. Spirit, please. Okay. All right. We got quite a few. <laughs> Let's see. We've got L. We've got R. I don't know why, but the song low, ra, de, Yep. Okay. N. <laughs> Somebody could be a nurse. P. Uh. These can be your initials or theirs, or it could spell out a word that's significant for you. We have V. We've got K. We've got F. We've got another L, so L could be very significant. Maybe you have double letters or initials in your name, or they do. We have J. We have you. We have e. <laughs> I <just> saw eek. <laughs> Maybe you two both like haunted houses or scary movies or something. Maybe that's something you bond over. J. So somebody's initials could be JJ. I just heard Cujo. What? Um, that's the name of that that Stephen King novel and movie, right? The the one about the dog. Maybe you like Stephen King. I don't know. But uh, JJ could be somebody's initials. We have eight. Somebody could be a junior. So somebody could be a life path eight. With eight coming through, that did come out on the, the wrong person's side. And I feel like, so I know I said, I, I, I know what I said. No, I know that I said I want to get things for the right person. I feel like spirit is just reminding you that the wrong person, it's not even that, I mean, we're all on our own journey, right? It's... It's not like they're they're bad or I'm again, I'm not trying to talk crap on them, but they like spirit is saying they're on their own journey and they have to transform by themselves. And that's not that's not your responsibility. And your transformation is ahead of theirs and you are meant to further that transformation with this person and you are going to be so happy i and it may not feel like that for some somebody here is definitely i think involved maybe with the wrong person or really struggling to let them go and i i'm sending you so much love truly i, I am i feel like spirit is saying that this will change this will shift and die and be reborn into an understanding of why that person was important for you to meet and become your karma mate of sorts because it was teaching you a lot about yourself and what what's right for you and what isn't right for you and you taught them all you could teach them as well you know they they learned a lot from you and the person that you're meant to be with is going to help transform you as well and help you understand why no one else was meant for you. 
you know so we've got the number four here yeah building a very stable relationship you're coming into contact with your emperor you know uh it doesn't have to mean that it's a man just somebody who's very stable who has a lot of structure in their life but also allows for you to be free their structure is not a cage they really just embody what home should be for you and i feel like that will be so beautiful 84 could be significant they could be a life path for or you could be 48 as well we've got two so yeah i feel like this is your divine counterpart coming into play you know with the number two this is a very balanced relationship very reciprocated 24 could be significant, 42, 28, 82. We are going to get charms now. So I'm going to shake this box. It's going to be loud. So please turn your headphones down or take them out if you have them in. So three, two, one. All right. Yeah. Speaking of beaver. So somebody beavers could be significant. But what I get from this every time is that your person, the right person for you is going to work very hard to build something stable. And I feel like that is what you've always secretly craved. But it is something that feels very foreign to you. And I feel like your person's going to do a very good job of being gentle through this, you know, transition for you. And we'll still, allow, like I said, allow you to be free. So we've got the clamshell with the pearl. Yeah, you're going to feel like each other's treasures, you know? And this is, this is going to be a relationship that you both want to protect that is very beautiful and that is not just externally beautiful. I think you will be a beautiful couple for others to look at and gaze upon, but you're also very beautiful internally. Your relationship on the inside, right? It's that that balance it's not just oh well they look good together and it seems like everything's fine no like you put in the work and things are beautiful internally because you two work together very well we have the elephant this is a relationship that no matter what obstacle stands in your way you know you push past that lord ganesh could be significant for someone here just as a a note for someone and Lord Ganesh could be looking over your connection but also with elephants I feel like <laughs> I was getting six of cups for the wrong person but I'm also getting like with the right person you may feel a sense of familiarity of home with them that you've never experienced before you know you could feel like yeah I do know this person I've known this person before you know, you've got a lot of good memories with them, maybe from past lives. But also, I do feel like this is a very abundant, fruitful relationship with the elephant. What do we have here? Tis, ah, <laughs> tis but a scratch. So, Monty Python, Holy Grail here <laughs> could be uh, significant for you. But yeah, tis but a scratch. You could both be very punny. You could really bond over films and be very silly together. I feel like no matter what hardships you face your person's not going to run away they are going to show you that you can depend on them you know they're going to have your back we've got ripley from uh aliens so maybe the alien films are significant for you maybe you kind of look like sojourney weaver or maybe uh your partner does perhaps or you just embody that kind of energy or your partner does too where you know, I'm, I'm getting, your partner is always going to do the right thing. And I feel like you are too. I feel like you really try to do what's right for each other while also balancing out doing what's right for yourself. We have, do you still think of me with a little gravestone? Yeah, so you're, the wrong person is, they might pop in from time to time. And I feel like, at first, it's going to be very hard not to just run back into their arms because I think there is probably a lot of history there, especially with me putting it down right next to the elephant. That was not on purpose. It just kind of happened. 
And yeah, I feel like it's going to get easier though. It is going to feel like just a scratch and you are going to heal. You had that four of swords. You are going to heal and the six of swords above it for the right relationship. Your person is going to, the person that's right for you is not going to leave you to do all of that healing by yourself. They are going to be open with you. You know, they're going to give you that space to be emotional with them. They're not just stoic. They are someone who give me your love. Like they're going to want you to be open and honest and emotional with them and and they're going to want to help you heal your heart space again there's something with words of affirmation they might be the kind of person that'll like send you a a good morning text or good night text if you two ever have to be away from each other once you're together you know they're gonna tell you that they love you all of the time they could send you the best compliments through text or on a phone call or just in person only cried a little yay yeah I think your person is going to learn a lot from you about their own emotional body and how it's okay for them to cry you know I feel like they've they've made it a point to always be a safe space for others that you know they are a soft place for others to land but they have very seldom allowed themselves to have that with anyone you know maybe because they are very independent and they want to be dependable and that sort of gives them their self-worth I feel like you're going to help each other heal in a lot of ways but I do feel like your person is doing a lot of the healing work on their own as well you're not going to have to like catch them up or anything not idly do the leaves of Florian fall yeah it was not it was not by happen like happenstance, like it was not by chance that the two of you met. It was for a reason. And the reason is you're meant to be together. This was not idle. Lord of the Rings could be significant. Your person could be a bookworm. Maybe they really like J.R. Tolkien. Um, they also <laughs> maybe just really like Lord of the Rings. Maybe they kind of have an elvish look to them or you do. Maybe they really like your ears <laughs> or vice versa. But also autumn could be significant. Perhaps you are meeting them in autumn or fall. Overthinker. I do feel like your person having that cerebral air energy is prone to overthinking. And they may overthink this connection at times and you may have to show them how much you love them or tell them how much you love them you may have to talk them down in moments just because I do think they'll overthink from the standpoint of I don't think that they struggle with as many confidence issues as your the wrong person does because I'm getting they really struggle with that to a detrimental degree I get that your person struggles with it slightly where it's like they do get scared that they're at, at, in moments not good enough or they're not doing enough for you and so you might have to just you know, give them a little pep talk from now, uh, uh, every now and again. So yeah, with the sun, I feel like that said, I do feel like you two will be the sunshine in each other's lives. You know, this was, uh, <laughs> the sun is Ponyo, uh, from Studio Ghibli's Ponyo. So yeah. Um, <laughs> There's something very childlike about your connection. Like I said, something where you feel like you can let go and be free and silly. Maybe you bond over Studio Ghibli together. But with the sun here, I do feel like it's a very fruitful, loving, optimistic relationship. One that gives you hope. One that gives your inner child hope that, yes, we can finally be loved the way that we always wanted to be. So, yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. That's all that I have for you today, Pile One, though. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel when you do that. If you feel compelled to, you can comment in the comment section below and let me know what resonated for you. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, if you feel compelled to do that, you can also do that. So yeah, thank you for your support. For those who have already subscribed to me, thank you so, so much for being a part of my journey. I am sending every single person here so much love. And again, please know that you always have free will. This is just a little bit of spiritual guidance today, and I hope that it was helpful, but take it or leave it, right? So anyway, please take care of yourselves. Know that I am sending you so much love, and I will see you next time. Bye!
Hello, beautiful pile number two. If you were drawn to the Black Moonstone, then this is going to be a reading today all about the right versus the wrong person for you. So disclaimer, I am not trying to tell you how to live your life or who to go after. I am simply giving you guidance from spirit on who they intend for for you to be with the the right person for you and i will go into why um on on each option so this can apply to many different people it was meant to be applied to several so this can be a situation where you're trying to figure out you know in a third party that you're in like where you have two options you're trying to decide who you should go for it can apply there this can also apply to people who are currently single or even in a relationship, just trying to make sure they're with the right person. You know, I, I this can apply to anyone. This is not meant to be for any one specific situation. So yeah, just want to make sure you know that. So the way that this reading will be structured is we are going to do an energy check as always on you first, because I just think that that is so incredibly important and special to me. I love getting to know you through your energy. So We'll look at you first, then we will look at your two options and an energy check of their own, and then we will go into the tarot on the right versus the wrong person and why spirit is saying it is the right person for you or why it is the wrong person. And then we will do letters, numbers, and charms at the end just to give you extra confirmation. So let's dive right in with you first. So Ooh, tiger energy. Very beautiful. So tiger coming through, fire sign energy coming through. Although I do get a lot of water as well. Just the moon is coming through and it's making me, the tiger's honestly giving me high priestess vibes. So I don't know if you're a Pisces or the high priestess is special to you as far as the tarot cards go. Maybe that is a card that is part of your birth cards set. So if you know about that, then you know about it. And if not, you can go check out what your tarot birth cards are online. You can calculate that. There's all, all kinds of stuff on that online that you can check. But with you coming through with tiger energy, I definitely get this sense that you are a bit of a mystical, magical, witchy kind of person. That could be sort of your aesthetic is is feminine energy in the fire uh in the fire element so it's giving me queen of wands energy as well you do not have to be feminine to be in this pile and be uh in this energy check by the way like you do not have to identify as any particular gender i just want to make that very very uh known. <laughs> wow, words are really escaping me. I think you are very hypnotic, <laughs> pile too, because I got lost in the sauce. I got lost in the, the tiger's eyes, to be completely honest. I was looking at the card and I was thinking about you. You could look, you could be very cat-like in a way. Maybe you have cat-like features, like you have up-tilted uh, almond-shaped eyes or yeah, people could just tell you you remind them of a cat a little bit. Even the way you move, it could be very slinky and sexy. There's very sensual energy coming through here. But yes, you definitely come off as someone who is very spiritual, very otherworldly, who's very tapped in to their spiritual gifts, probably. For someone here, for a lot of people here, I think, actually. So yeah, you're not afraid of... Also, you're not afraid of the dark. And I, I mean, that could be like a literal thing. Like, oh yeah, I wasn't a kid that was afraid of the dark. You know, like that was just not a thing. Or maybe it was a thing and you grew out of it. But you're someone who, I, I literally mean, you're not afraid of the dark. You're not afraid of the silence. You're not afraid of your shadow. And you're not afraid of other people's either. So I'm getting, maybe for some of you, you could be tarot readers or you could do something spiritual for a living or f as a hobby, as a side hustle of sorts. And maybe what drew you into doing whatever work you do, I'm getting very specifically like Reiki healing for someone here or healing in some manner, maybe sexual healing as well. 
I feel like you were drawn to it, Pile 2, because you have transmuted this darkness for yourself. You've learned how to do this on your own and you want to give other people that same gift, which I think is so beautiful. Very, very intuitive here. Uh, the, the moon being on the tiger's third eye. Someone could be year of the tiger as well. I know I'm sort of jumping around a lot. You could be someone who... You have interests, you have very, very varied interests, and you're very mysterious. It's hard for people to box you in and tie you down to a specific, you know, uh, stereotype or mold, you know? You just, you break the mold is what I'm hearing. Very, very intense, but beautiful energy. Uh, very, very attractive, I think. So I'm going to fix my camera. There we go. I think that was a little better. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's continue on. All right. So we've got Chiron coming out for you now. Healing. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that this card came out for you. So this is kind of cool. Insecurity, wounds, vulnerabilities, deep-seated pain, teaching, power, spiritual strength, difficulties, guilt, transmuting, and healing others. So, the movie Moonlight could be significant for someone here. That's coming through. Um, the character's name is, I believe that he pronounces it Sharon. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a minute since I've seen the movie, but it is absolutely beautiful and I recommend it to anyone. Happy Pride Month, by the way. It, yeah. Um, maybe somebody is part of the LGBTQ plus community. Maybe that's why that came came up. Not that it it deals with so much more than than just that, but the character's name is Sharon and I remember it being spelled out on the screen and thinking, oh my gosh, Chiron? Um, and I, I've always wondered if maybe that's that was a double entendre of sorts. So anyway, that film could be significant for someone, but for you specifically with Chiron coming out, Maybe you have Chiron in Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius. Or even the 5th, 1st, or ninth house, if it's not directly in a fire sign. Just putting some stuff out there. It doesn't have to be, but that is something that's coming through. I feel like, yeah, you have done a lot of healing. And you have done this beautifully. And in a way that has been so courageous and undaunted you know it's not because you weren't afraid in your own way of this darkness but because you wanted to become a better person you know you wanted to throw yourself in the proverbial fire and come out anew you could do fire rituals by the way i'm seeing somebody with incense sticks or palo santo someone could do trataka with candle gazing as well that is something that is recommended with the tiger card so maybe that's something that you want to look into but yeah i feel like you are someone who like i said before without beating a dead horse here <laughs> you are someone who has transmuted a lot of your own shadow your own darkness your own pain into light for the collective you could be a light worker and i feel like you are doing this for the collective as well you know you could help people do that same thing for themselves you could teach people how to do that or provide a service so that you can help transmute that for them let's see what else we've got here so we've got the mystic oh my gosh yeah this is beautiful so the number 21 could be significant someone could be 21 here someone could be born on the 21st two two and one <laughs> here or 10 10 and one it is 21 but i was just thinking 
two, two, one for some reason. So five, the number five could be significant, which makes a lot of sense. First of all, Leo energy. So someone could definitely have Leo in their chart. Lots of fire coming through. Even this moth looks like it's caught flame. So you're, you could be somebody who uh, practices yoga and works with tapas, works with their inner fire, their inner agni, does uh, breath work to stimulate that for someone here. Just throwing that out there because that was an image that came through my mind very significantly. But I'm getting the number five. I'm also getting the number three here. So yeah, very feminine energy, someone who's comfortable with their feminine energy, even no matter how you present yourself, no matter how you identify you are someone who I think is very comfortable with that receptivity, that high priestess energy, the energy of receiving, of being reactive as, oppo as opposed to proactive, who sees a lot of power within that feminine energy, who could help empower others to find the power within that too. Perhaps changing the course of the divine feminine perhaps changing the outlook that others have on what it means to be feminine which is beautiful with the mystic i feel like people have definitely misunderstood you in your life you know the mystic is often very misunderstood by society and i feel like you could definitely fall into that category you know maybe that was part of your chiron your karma of, of sorts, like the pain that you went through in life. Not saying you deserved it when I say karma, just that it could have been part of your soul's journey. And I feel like it taught you these very invaluable lessons. And I feel like the way you look at it is so beautiful. I'm getting somebody that's just so incredibly grateful and loving for all their experiences, no matter how dark and painful they are. And that is truly so inspiring not just for me as the reader to be picking up on your energy but to to the people around you and i want you to know that spirit is very proud of you that the people around you really love you and look up to you as well with this mystic i definitely get the sense that you could very much be well known in your community in a spiritual community very specifically and i'm getting that even with like the three and the five um so maybe somebody's 35 here but also With the five, you know, that's entertainment. It's it's creative. It's, uh, you know, it is a degree of fame. And so maybe you do have that, that fame. And I feel like if you do, I, am, I would love to know <laughs> about your channel, about your, uh, whatever it is that you do please like i would i would love to know so that i can check you out because i really love your energy um we've got fire coming through again so very fiery energy you could be very feisty um but also i get the sense that Fire is very important for you in your practice. Like I said, it could be something that you use ritualistically. And, you know, maybe you're somebody that, you know, you could write things down and then burn the page. You know, I'm getting somebody that, that burns the book, that burns the chapter to start the next one. Fire is very symbolic for you. It's cleansing. It's power. You know, the four matchsticks here, it's the four of wands as well. You are someone who, again, there's something celebratory about you and what you've been through. You are someone who looks at things in such a beautiful, enlightening, inspiring kind of way. I really do feel like you help other people light their fire as well. Yeah, I definitely... I'm digging this energy. I really, yeah, grief, like in the reverse. You are not someone who's holding on to your grief. You don't identify anymore because maybe you did in the past, but you definitely are not someone who's identifying with your trauma anymore. You know, you're past that. 
and you're someone who is helping other people release that back to the fire to be cleansed to turn into something fertile for themselves to use to grow from you know yes feel your grief go through it but transmute it into something that is powerful for you right and i feel like you do that and i feel like you're helping other people do that that's so inspiring we finally we have 50 under a spell so there's that five <laughs> i got it <laughs> the five here so yeah somebody who comes in and inspires a lot of change as well for people hierophant energy so yeah definitely could be very significant in your spiritual community or will be very significant maybe that is something that's happening right now you're on the rise you know with this mystic the moth flying under a spell here though i feel like you have a tendency of without meaning to putting people under a spell i mean you really did make me lose track of what i was saying for a second i got very like, sucked into you and your energy so i feel like you have the capacity definitely to do that without even trying uh putting people under love spells people could fall in love with you very easily you could have a lot of people that tell you you know you're you're their soulmate you are a twin flame you're you're the love of their life and you're like oh, okay um <laughs> like i'm just I'm just vibing. <laughs> I'm just being me. And I feel like it's because, yes, you are seductive and you are sexy, right? But you are also, like physically, but you're also someone who is appealing in your energy field. People get so drawn into you. And I feel like you also could have been someone that fell in love very easily in your past. Maybe that was something that you had to grow from and learn from maybe that was part of your chiron maybe you have chiron in the seventh house or something but i'm seeing somebody who perhaps was a serial romantic or who was just very much under spells with people you know you would fall in love very hard and fast and you wanted to see the best in people in moments and as soon as the spell started to lift or you you got, you know, I'm seeing somebody like underwater and then coming up for air for a second, you may have realized in that moment that, oh, this is not love. <laughs> this is not love. And then you had to grieve that relationship, you know? And I feel like this could have happened for a while, but I feel like this has changed if you're resonating with that. But I definitely feel like for all of you, if you don't resonate with that storyline, I feel like you are somebody that other people fall in love with very easily. So that's all I have as far as the energy check for you goes. So let's move on to the energy check for these options of yours. So we're going to start with the wrong. And then we will talk about the right person. All right. Okay, so we're going to put all the cards out first. We've got Cosmic Egg in the reverse. We've got the Acolyte in reverse with new projects and learning in the reverse. We've got Energy. We've got Cheese Fries. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so weird. This is the same number that was on the Mystic card. 21. Huh, okay. And we have House 2 in the reverse. And I wouldn't usually take this in reverse, but Spirit told me to, and it felt very significant. So we have physical security, possessions, material values, and self-worth in the reverse. So, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about it, pile two, before we jump into who is the right option. I feel like the wrong person, how you will know that they are the wrong person for you is that they're not going to be very open to spirituality. They're not going to be very open to... their own spirituality. And so it could be very hard for the two of you to connect. I feel like this is someone that 
is often very concerned with their 3D self. You know, this is someone that feels very behind in life in moments. They feel like they've put so much work and energy into, you know, what they wanted in life, into their studies perhaps, but they feel like almost kind of like they have a chip on their shoulder a little bit, like life has cheated them in some way. It's not fair that they see, you know, like from their perspective, they feel like it's not fair that they have to work so hard for everything in their life. You know, they just want to have their cheese fries. They want to, the number 21 is making me think of the world card. Like they want They want that sense of completion, that sense of perfection, you know, with the cheese fries. But they feel like with the cosmic egg card in the reverse, this is for me world card energy in the reverse because this is the last card of the deck. And so for me, that's similar to the last card of the major arcana, which is the world. And, you know, it's this is uh, crown chakra energy in the reverse as well. So very blocked up crown chakra you know, this is delays and frustrations and not understanding their Chiron, their karma of sorts, not understanding how to transmute that or work through it. And they don't really want help. It's like they are protecting their trauma. They are very uh, stingy about it in a way. They're identifying with it. They could have had a really tough upbringing, a really tough childhood, specifically with material wealth. You know, they could have grown up in poverty for some of them. They've had to work very, very hard for the things that they have. I feel like they have a low self-worth because of this. Like it's giving me um, Goodwill Hunting vibes. This is giving me Will from Goodwill Hunting. You know, I feel like they want to be loved and accepted for who they are, but they don't love and accept themselves for who they are. And it's like it's love has become a four letter word that they dread. It's it's like a curse word at this point. And. I, f I feel like I want to hug this person and I want to tell them that they can let their guard down, but you know, it's their journey. And I think you will understand this. And I feel like you will notice that when you're around them, your energy, you're going to feel depleted by them. Because I honestly am getting like they are a black hole right now, to be completely frank with you. And it's just, it's never going to feel like it's enough. Let's look at the right person. <laughs> um, all right. So the right person for you. We've got the Phoenix. The warrior in reverse with perfectionism and burnout in reverse here. So interesting. Okay. Intuition, so very spiritual person. Definitely going to have that in common, I think. The last straw. <laughs> I like your person already. <laughs> All right. Not that I don't like this person. I just, you know, this is about the right person. And I, I like this person for you. We have Neptune energy. So Pisces energy coming through for your person as well. Dream and transcend. You two could honestly mirror each other a lot in the very best of ways, you know, and it's it's really lovely to see. I like this a lot. This could be somebody else in the spiritual community, someone who does something similar to you. Doesn't have to be. Maybe they're just very tapped into their spirituality and their spirituality means something to them or you are like helping them open up to that as well. I feel like your person with the phoenix and the warrior in reverse, your person, not unlike the wrong person here, your person, the right person, is going to be someone who has also been through some shiz. Like, they have been through a tough time. It has not been great. Which, you know, we all go through crap. And I feel like you are someone who totally understands that. And you're like, yeah, but it's all about how do we transmute that? Your person is on the same page as you. And that's how you're going to know. You're going to see this wrong person and you're going to realize they're not willing to let go 
This person is all about letting go, is all about burning what no longer serves them and is very fiery as well. They could be a fellow fire sign. They don't have to be. They could also be a Pisces, but they are someone who's going to have that fiery nature and that connection to fire, to tapas, to uh, their, their agni is very lit up inside. You know, they're not a warrior that's going to fight unnecessary battles and continue to put themselves in the same type of crappy situation over and over and over again because they're so tied to that trauma, right? Instead, what they're going to do is be like, I'm going to pick and choose my battles wisely with the warrior in reverse here. They're done with fighting maybe like growing up they had to fight for everything that they had they had to be more of a fighter than a lover i'm getting oh gosh the song comes through so much so apologies if you're tired of hearing about it but the song by Kali, the uh silence is coming through for your person the right person might really resonate with that energy with that song like they found peace in the silence like they they don't want to be violent anymore You know, maybe like people used to bully them and like try to like physically fight with this person and this person had to defend themselves. They could tell you about that, but they're not, a, they're just to be clear, I do not get physically violent vibes from this energy. What I'm trying to say is that they don't want to be in that kind of energy where they have to do that anymore. Like they will just, they'll just walk away. I'm seeing, you know, the Five of Swords card in the Rider Waite deck. And I feel like they are the the energy that's walking away from the person that's holding up their sword. You know, they're like, sure, if you want to win that badly, you win. <laughs> I, but I am choosing peace today. It's so cute that we have these two moths here with the last straw. I feel like you are coming in... And you are going to be like their perfect freaking match. <laughs> and I just think that's so beautiful. You are going to feel like moths to a flame to each other. It's going to be when you two could honestly be sort of at your wits end at the last straw of relationships. You know, you could be there right now and your person is right there with you where they're just like, I am so over like the shitty situations that I've been in this, sh this crap. Sorry, excuse my language, but like the crappy relationships that I've been in, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> and, and then you two meet each other. Maybe you two meet each other at Starbucks or something or a coffee shop. Maybe you two bond over coffee. I don't know. You could be caffeine addicts. <laughs> um, you could work very hard. Maybe you two own like your own spiritual businesses or your own businesses. And that's something that to, the two of you bond over. But I do see with the number 10 here that it's when you, it, oh my gosh, it's, it's totally the Shakespeare line, right? Of journeys end when lovers meeting. It's you, right? This journey that you've been on is ending this chapter is closing. You're burning the book. And then the two of you meet. That's so beautiful. And you help each other transcend. You help each other with your dreams. You two could be dreaming about each other as well. Maybe you meet in the astral realm. I feel like there's going to be this effortless fluidity, uh, fluidity, there we go, <laughs> fluidity. <laughs> um, no, there's going to be this effortless fluidity between the two of you where you just, you just get each other. You know, you were coming through as the mystic and it felt like people don't always get you. Not that you're not being yourself or being inauthentic. I think you're being very authentic, Pile too. And I feel like sometimes people don't like that. And it's not it's not on you to make people like you, right? And I you it doesn't make you less lovable. And you're this person is going to make you feel so seen and safe and loved for who you truly are. They are going to really embrace this in you. 
And I think they're going to inspire you to chase your dreams to, to also to embrace your creativity. With the intuition as well, I do wonder if maybe the two of you will be telepathically linked. Like, I think the two of you definitely already could be in each other's energies and not even totally realize it. And maybe you do realize it. Maybe you feel this person intuitively on the horizon for you. They could feel this too, to be completely honest. And I do think that you two will be very linked psychically. Could really be able to communicate with each other without saying anything you know like they could live at a distance for some of you and or maybe they have to travel for work or vice versa and whenever you're feeling down they'll be able to pick up on it right away and they'll text you or they'll call you and be like are you okay and they'll help you They'll help you transmute the energy that you need to transmute. You will not always have to be alone on that journey. They will help you as well, which is so lovely. So let's continue on. We're going to look at the tarot now. So we're going to see why spirit is saying these people are right or wrong for you. So we are going to look at the right person first. So they are going to be the top row of the tarot that is the cosmic slumber tarot and then we will look at the children of litho tarot for the wrong person so they will be the bottom row the top row we've got the hierophant so oh my gosh the hierophant actually came out higher level commitment uh, this person will want to commit to you will want to commit not just to you but to your spiritual journey to their own spiritual journey will help you in that way like i said you're not going to feel like you're so alone you're finally going to feel like somebody's in your corner that really gets it we've got the three of pentacles in reverse yeah i feel like you've felt very misunderstood in your life and you're finally not going to feel so alone and this person also isn't going to have like a wandering eye. Maybe that's something that you've experienced in the past with the three of pentacles. Like maybe you felt like you always kind of had to share. I'm <laughs> I'm totally getting that song by Khalid right now, the, the silent song. There's a line about, and I never had a love of my own. I'm so used to sharing. Yeah, like that line is coming through loud and clear right now. So I feel like you and your person have experienced that. And I feel like you both will make sure to let the other one know that you are, you're it for them and vice versa. Like you two will do a, such a great job at expressing that verbally and non-verbally, you know, through action as well. We've got the 10 of pentacles, a very um, sensual kind of love between the two of you. And also a very stable love with all this pentacle energy. Even the Hierophant being Taurus energy. So maybe your person is an earth sign. They could have very earthy energy. Um, you know, they are, they're very dependable. They're very dependable. And I think that they're going to help you build a very beautiful home. They're going to help provide for you, create a family with you. Family will be very important to them. Prince of Swords in the reverse. So... This is the Knight of Swords. They could honestly be a bit slow with this Pentacles energy. That's more what I'm getting here. This could be a slow burn relationship. This is somebody who wants to court you. That wants to do things quote unquote right. Like very traditional possibly. They don't want to rush pleasure with you. They want to really take their time. They want to get to know you, like really get to know you. They don't want it to just be this quick physical encounter with you and then that be it. I feel like that's kind of their fear because they do find you so incredibly attractive, pile uh, too. They find you so sexy and they're like, Oh my gosh, I could incinerate this relationship very, very quickly. And I do not want that. I want this to last, you know, like they could literally like, you know, in like a 18 plus way, they're like, oh my gosh, like I'm so scared that I'm not going to last with a pile too. And yeah, they want to 
they, they want to make sure that they really please you. And not just in that way. They want to please you just in general, too. The last card we have is the Two of Swords. 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 <laughs> the Two of Swords. <laughs> um, your person thinks you have a really cute laugh, by the way. They like making you laugh. Anytime they can make you giggle, it's a win in their book. Um, <laughs> but with the Two of Swords in the reverse here, they're so sure about you. They are so sure about you. You, you eliminate any doubt and you become, again, I'm hearing you're it. You're the only choice for me. You know, I, I'm i seeing Arwen uh, coming home to Elrond, to Rivendell, after she's supposed to have left. And then she sees in a vision her son with Aragorn, right? And she comes back and she's pissed because she's like, you did not tell me the full vision and that there was a possibility for Aragorn and I to have a future together, to have a child. And, you know, he's being Elrond and he's trying to be a good dad, right? But like, anyway, the point of it is, is that what I was getting here is that she, um, she binds herself to him. She gives up her immortality and there is no ship to the immortal lands for the elves that will bear her and that's what she tells her dad basically and i feel like that's kind of your person like there is no ship for anyone else that will bear me like this is it this i'm so certain of it they are so certain of you maybe lord of the rings is like significant or something maybe they look at you as kind of their arwen or aragorn i don't know that could just be a thing um Maybe you two <laughs> have like certain couples that you stand and like whatever media that you enjoy shows that you bond over movies that you bond over. It can be really cute. Uh, but yeah, let's look at now the wrong person for you. Why are they the wrong person? So interesting. <laughs> We've got the three of pentacles in the upright. Okay, so I get the sense that This person might play into what you have been put in before, where it's like you're almost trying to beat out competition for them. Even though this is the Three of Pentacles and this does not always have to be third party energy, this could be somebody that does put you in third party energy because it might give them a sense of self-worth to feel like they're being fought for or fought over, right? I was getting very low self-worth. So in this case, I do get that third party energy. And it doesn't have to be third party like, oh, you have to beat out the competition of another lover. This could be with work. This could be with uh, family. This can be with friends. But it's they're always pouring their energy into other things. And they make you fight really hard to have a place in their life. Yeah. Like, it's it's not easy. We've got the five of cups in the reverse. So... This is interesting. I feel like part of the reason that this is the wrong person for you is that uh, they can't seem to move on. Like they have so many personal setbacks in their life. So many things that they are holding on to and they don't feel like there's any way out and you can't lead the way for them. They have to want to do that for themselves and they just are very blinded by their own pain and that is honestly really, really sad. That is really sad and they're on their own journey and they will be okay eventually, but they have to, they have to do this themselves. You can't do the work for them, right? So yeah, we've got the king of swords in the reverse. I feel like this is somebody who is in, is not incapable. They have a hard time being honest with others because they have a hard time being honest with themselves. So, you know, I feel like that's part of what's holding them back is they're 
having a very hard time in accepting truths about who they are. You know, they want very much to blame everyone else. They could be very manipulative. They could just really vibrate at a low level. And again, this is part of why you two wouldn't work. You vibe at such a high frequency pile too. This person just can't keep up with you. Not at their current pace and who they currently exist as. And unfortunately, they have to to want to get out of this. And right now, they don't. They have the two of pentacles. Yeah, they're very overwhelmed in life right now. They feel overwhelmed by their circumstances. They feel sorry for themselves, to be completely honest. You know, the acolyte in reverse, I feel like they're upset because they feel like they were given you know, a bad hand in life. And I feel like you honestly, if you've met this person, just know that you helped them a lot. You have done your part. You have made them realize hard truths, right? Things that they will eventually be impacted by and move on with and learn to to cope with. But right now they're There's a mountain in front of them and they're very hesitant on climbing it, right? And so you did your part, now they have to do theirs. And yeah, the nine of wands here. I feel like they, part of the reason that this doesn't work is that they are going to, they are, they're in maladaptive coping mechanisms. There's no way around it. They're very protective of themselves and they're protective, like I said, of their trauma. They are identifying with it. And so... There is really no way around that for you. There's no way for you to really help them transmute what they don't want to transmute. It's it's something that they will have to eventually learn how to let go and make that final little leg of the journey. And I feel like you see the potential in them, right? You see so much beauty in them. And that's a testament to yourself, right? That's a testament to who you are. This person will eventually get there, but it's on them and it's up to them. This is not a reading about who, you know, who they are or what they're going through. Not entirely, right? It's just to let you know that the reason that they're not good for you, that they're the wrong person, is that they're held back. And it could take them a very long time to get out of this energy if they get out of it in this lifetime and not the next. So... All right, we are going to look now at some letters, numbers, and charms to finish out this reading for extra added confirmation. So, yeah, let's see. So we're going to start with letters and numbers. So letters and numbers for pile number two. Okay. So these can be your initials or theirs. We've got, or they can spell out a word. We've got K that you're looking for. Oop, P. Someone could live in a place called Cape. I don't know. But Cape could be significant. Q. T. You're cute. <laughs> You're the right person's gonna. Maybe they call you cutie. <laughs> maybe ironically, like they like to tease you. We've got H. I think you're hot <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, maybe you two live in a place that's like, or maybe you or your person are from a place that was that has like a hot climate, or you live in a place that has a hot climate as well. We have Z. And we've got E. So, yeah, there's something very easy, easy breezy cover girl about you. No, but there's something easy about the relationship that you're going to have with the right person. You're just going to fit. It's like two puzzle pieces coming together is what I just saw. So we've got the number three, which is so funny because I was, wow, I don't <laughs> know what's happening there. <laughs> the number three, pick number three, my lord. Um, <laughs> Shrek coming through unexpectedly for the win. That makes me so happy. Someone can, could have been asking for Shrek as a confirmation. Well, you got it, sir. Or person, I should say. You got it. Um, three, yes. I, 
your person, you or your person could be born in March. You could be a life path three, born on the third. Three could be significant in some way, but three coming through for you makes me so happy because that was a number I was getting earlier with feminine energy, empress energy, somebody who is sitting and waiting for the right love for them, not chasing it. We have 10. So 30 could be significant for someone here. Someone could be 30. Someone could be born on the 30th. And the number 10 as well here, you know, that came through before as well for you on your person side. The ending of a chapter to start a new one. Something beautiful on its way. Journeys in, lovers meeting. It's lovely. All right, so, and Wheel of Fortune as well with the number 10. Before I get there, hold on. Somebody could be born in October or on the 10th as well. But Wheel of Fortune, this is destined to happen. This is, this is somebody you are fated to meet. All right, we are going to look at charms now. So I'm going to shake this box and it might be loud. So take your headphones out or turn them down if you have them in. So three, two, one. All right, so we've got the Fanta. <laughs> Lemon and lime could be significant for somebody. Maybe citrus fruits. With the Fanta as well. Um, you and your person could like sing so silly songs to each other. I don't know. Like, don't you want to want a Fanta? Na, 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 na. Yeah, I don't know. You two could just be like really cute together. Um, <laughs> it's just something that's coming through. You're going to feel very refreshing to this person and vice versa. I think it's just going to feel so easy and i know easy breezy cover well but no it's gonna feel really easy to be with them like i said before it's just gonna feel so different so lovely android 18 coming through so yeah your person definitely sees you as a bit of a femme fatale you do not have to resonate again with being feminine but they see you as the embodiment of a femme fatale someone who could be like a bit of a black widow you know with the the spider coming through as well someone who isn't afraid to speak their mind, to, you know, go against the grain and be who they are. Um, someone who's very independent, who can take care of themselves, who may look a bit like Scarlett Johansson for somebody, <laughs> um, but also someone who knows how to balance being independent with dependent, right? So, you know, you don't depend on a relationship to identify yourself but you also don't need to be so hyper independent that it's like I don't even feel like I'm in a relationship like I do feel like you're very good at balancing uh with the spider as well I feel like you are very very creative this relationship I do get the sense will inspire a lot of creativity and genius creativity as well coming through so why yeah, you're going to finally figure out why the past love spells were broken and didn't work out for the for the two of you. Both of you are going to find that out. You are going to become why, the reason why for each other too. We've got, I allow my sensuality to express itself freely. Yeah, your person is going to love how sensual you are. You're going to have a very sensual relationship. You know, I think your intimate life is going to be really good <laughs> it's gonna be really good you're gonna be very attracted to each other on so many levels you could actually go through your kundalini awakening with this person if you haven't already experienced it or you could inspire their kundalini awakening so snakes could be important we've got uh somebody could be you're the snake we've got uh elisa from gargoyles so maybe yeah maybe you two bond over like childhood shows or something but yeah between android 18 dbz and uh Elisa here. I feel like you definitely embody that that badass, you know, femme fatale energy. Like it's, it's just it's a thing. Your person thinks you are so damn sexy. They love it. And they love that you look like you could like maybe you you have this appearance like you could kick somebody's ass. <laughs> like 
you know like your person's like oh that's, but that's kind of hot though <laughs> like that's that's really hot to this person like they like the fact that you can take care of yourself and you will but you also will let them help you you know like i said so oh yeah speaking of here we go strength princess mononoke yeah wolves could be significant for you they see you as their princess Mon mononoke they see you as somebody that is very strong, very capable, but you are somebody who can be very feminine and soft. You are a good balance of your feminine and masculine energies. Very, very balanced. We've got the chameleon. You are quite the chameleon, aren't you? Your person loves that about you. You're so multifaceted. You have so many different interests. You have so many different sides and they feel like they're always learning something new about you every day and they want to learn new things about you. You, you are their favorite subject, you know? they they wouldn't want it to be any other way they want this to be a lifelong learning journey with each other so that is all that i have for you today pile two i hope you enjoyed this reading if you did please give me a thumbs up it really does help my channel when you do that if the reading resonated and you feel compelled to share with me i would love to hear about it in the comment section below and if you feel like you would enjoy more readings you can always head over to my channel and check them out if you want to subscribe i would love to have you be here with me that would be great please join <laughs> uh, thank you so much just for watching today for those who are already subscribed to me thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of my journey i just love and adore each one of you and to all of the people that watched this pile subscribed or not i am sending you so much love again you know you have free will. Do whatever you'd like with the information that was given. This was just meant as guidance. This was not meant to tyrannically try to uh, control your life or the outcome of it. You have free will. And I am wishing you the very best. And I cannot wait for you to be with whoever it is that you are meant to end up with and for you to meet the right person. So I'm sending you so much love. Please take care of yourself. Bye. Hello, beautiful pile three. Welcome back. If you were drawn to the raw rose quartz, then this is going to be your reading today. So as a reminder, we are looking at the right person versus the wrong person for you. And this is not to try to tell you what to do or how to live your life. This is just to give you spiritual guidance. So just kind of a disclaimer in the beginning. You always have free will. All right. So just remember that throughout this reading. We are going to be looking at first who are you <laughs> um so we're going to do your energy check then we will do an energy check for the right versus the wrong person then we will get into the tarot to look at why spirit thinks it is the right person as opposed to the wrong person and what you need to know about what the relationship dynamics would be like with each person and then we'll end with letters numbers and charms just to give you some extra confirmation this is meant to apply to many different types of situations by the way this can be applied to you know someone that may be in a third party situation and is trying to figure out who's the best option for me this also could be for somebody who is single right now who's just curious about when i get back into the dating scene i want things to be different and like who is going to be the right kind of person for my life and this also could be just for anybody that's in a relationship that's like, is this the right person? <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, it can be for anybody. So just want to make that very clear. All right. So we're going to look at your energy first. So let's see what we got here. We have the crocodile. So water sign energy coming through right away for you. You do not have to be a water, water sign, but you could be a Scorpio, uh, Pisces or a Cancer. I'm getting heavy Scorpio vibes. I usually get that with the crocodile card. So I'll just be completely frank with you. That is what I'm getting. Because I get this very aloof kind of energy. You are someone who could be very quiet. You could be shy or reserved. You don't have to be. What I really get from this is that you're very analytical in a way that I pick up from Scorpio energy. Just for me personally. So that is something that is coming through. You do not have to be a water sign though if the rest of that resonates. With crocodile as well, I do think yeah, you are somebody who likes to really take your time in situations. You may not be very quick to react 
I think you're someone who likes to observe for a while before you make any firm decision. You definitely have very intense eyes. <laughs> I keep getting drawn into the crocodile's eye. I think people find them both beautiful and also quite penetrating and they wonder what it is that you are seeing when you look at them. You're giving me almost like interrogator vibes without even meaning to be that way. You know, you really know how to read the room. You know how to read somebody and they feel like you're reading their soul when you look at them. Someone here could be an INFJ because I'm getting the INFJ stare. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you just watched a Frank James video. Hey, <laughs> um, but also, you know, you could just know that that's a thing. Or you could be like a Scorpio moon as well. Someone who just has very, very intense eyes and an intense intuition as well. So yes, let's continue on. All right, we've got next coming out 11th house energy. So Aquarius energy now coming through in your reading. So maybe you have a significant Aquarius placement. Maybe you have sun or moon in the 11th house. You could have Scorpio in the 11th house. Just some things uh, that could be significant for someone. But the overall energy says community. And we have keywords, society, organizations, friends, social circle, giving back, hopes and wishes, group activities, membership, I'm sorry, memberships, networking, and social consciousness. So I was getting kind of loner vibes, but at the same time, I do feel like people tend to gravitate toward you. And maybe you are more of an ambivert or an extrovert, but I'm picking up very solitary vibes from the cro crocodile. So um and that's just a thing. You could have a very small social circle, people that you really do care about. Or like I said, maybe you just have very few friends that you would consider really like friends or close friends, but you are very popular. People really like your energy. They like being around you, even though you intimidate people. They really enjoy you. Uh, you could work with the community in some way. You could do uh charity stuff like you could work for a non-for-profit you could work in the service industry possibly uh you could work within law like you could be a lawyer of some kind you don't have to be you could be a psychologist or something like that but i do get the sense that you work within your community and your name holds some kind of weight in your community. Like I, I really do feel like you put a lot of energy or maybe you do this anonymously as well. I could totally see that with the crocodile. Like you are like, eh, I don't really, I really care about the collective and I, I want the community to do well. Like I'm a humanitarian at heart, but I kind of want to do this under the radar with the crocodile. I could totally see you being the kind of person that, you know, is behind somebody in a line and you are, I'm sorry, you're ahead of somebody in the line in like a drive through and you pay for the person behind you. I could see you being that kind of person or, you know, maybe you've like sent, I don't know, sent like uh, people gifts like on a forum or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could, you could be somebody that wants to take care of people but you don't really want the recognition that comes with it because you just really want to do it out of the goodness of your heart you know and i think that's so incredibly sweet like you are very opposite of i'm <laughs> someone like michael scott in the office for instance maybe somebody's an office fan because i don't know why this is coming through but it's important you would never be the kind of person that would do what Michael Scott did to those poor children in Scott's tots and was like promising them the freaking world and then just ripped the rug out from underneath them. Like you would never, ever do that. You know, maybe you're a teacher. Maybe that's why that's coming through. I feel like you're somebody who's very socially adept. You are someone who, like I said, reads people very well. And like I said, you really do care about helping people be better you you want to make the world a better place you want to leave people and places better than when you found them and i think that's really beautiful all right so let's see what else we have we've got the cave the cave of wonders <laughs> um someone could be an aladdin fan i was also hearing 
the song from Avatar The Last Airbender to lovers. <laughs> um, yes, well, there we go. In the, ca- in the cave coming through, maybe you are someone that likes to spend a lot of time alone, like watching things. Like you like to watch people, you like to watch shows, maybe you watch a lot of tarot readings. If, uh, if you've watched a lot of mine, <laughs> thank you so much for sticking with me through all my goofiness. <laughs> um, but 32 coming through here. So someone could be 32. I'm also getting with three and two together. When we add those numbers, I'm getting the number five. So somebody is constantly trying to change, right? You're trying to help people change, help the world change in some way. Change is very important to you. I feel like you are someone who could have been very, at points, disconnected from your inner world, you know, uh, like from your heart space specifically. Like that could have been dark for a while. You could have gone through a very dark period where, you know, maybe you were hermiting a lot, but you weren't necessarily looking within Maybe you were afraid of looking within and really changing and seeing what needed to be changed. But I feel like, you know, if that's resonating for you, I feel like that has has since transformed for you. And I feel like you have become someone who has been very willing to look within yourself. And maybe you were always someone, you know, because for some of you, it could be that you've always been programmed that way. Like you could be very introspective. You could be, you could have some Pisces in your chart. I could see somebody here being very much kind of an escapist, right? And they escape to their own inner world a lot because it feels safer and it's not so overwhelming. You could get overstimulated very easily. So you need that solitude of the cave, right? You kind of need to be a hermit or like a shaman and go off and do your own thing. And maybe this has been very hard for relationships that you've had for your partners to understand. Like you really thrive on freedom and autonomy. Like you do not do well when you feel smothered. Let's see what else we've got here. So speaking of smother, yeah, we've got smother with the number 30. So uh, the 30th could be significant of any month. Maybe somebody's birthday is on the 30th. Uh, The number three could be significant because it's come out twice now. So, you know, feminine energy coming through quite a bit with the crocodile also. So, you know, that's a feminine sign of water. But you do have this balance of feminine and masculine because air is a masculine element. So and you do not have to identify as any specific gender in this pile just to be very clear on that. You can identify however you'd like and you are always welcome. So, yeah. But with smother here, I do feel like that sort of echoes what I was just saying before where, you know, people could have clung to your energy. I do get this sense that people really like to touch you they like to be in your space they like to just be around you be you know absorbing your light right you like to sit in the shadows in hopes that nobody's going to notice you i think sometimes and inadvertently people are always drawn to you and they want to smother you they want to make you theirs they don't know how to let you go because i think that you've got you might have a tendency of drawing in people who are very insecure, who need a lot of attention, and who are not like, who who just aren't as tapped into their own energy. You know, they're not as willing to look into themselves as you are. And I think you really need someone like that. But I feel like you might have been in very smothering kind of energy. We've got the number 16 here, so justice coming through Uh, this is interesting i feel like so you could have some libra in your chart for one thing this card actually in this deck talks about how you would as a person i think and this is very scorpionic in nature understand that in making one decision it means that another decision has to be closed out and is dead, basically, right? Like, when we choose a path, it means we're not choosing the other. And I I know that sounds like, well, duh, common sense, but it's like, 
you truly abide by that and you when you make a decision like you that's why it takes you so long i think like that's why it takes because you are trying to do what's best for everyone right that's very libran but i feel like you are you have that scorpio element too of like you accept that like when you make a decision it means that the other decision is now null and void. You know, like I'm not trying to go back and, okay, well, it didn't work out with this partner, so I'm going to go back to my old partner. Like, I feel like you're just like, no, I'm constantly looking forward. You know, I'm always looking forward. I'm not trying to look behind me and go back. Like, I'm going to just continue forward and that'll be that. I will find my justice. I feel like you're somebody that tries to be very fair to others, but you also want to be very fair to yourself. You could be somebody that's very tapped into spirit as well with six and one together adding up to seven. You could be a life path seven. You don't have to be. With the number six here and the number one like apart from each other, I'm getting, you know, somebody that again is very balanced right? Justice energy. But also, you're very balanced within yourself, that feminine and masculine energy. You have that ability to be very proactive and go after what you want, but you also know when it is best for you to stay in place and receive. And I think that's really lovely. And I think a lot of people could learn from you. And they probably do. It's why they're drawn to you. Move on. Yeah, you know how to move on. You do know how to move on. You're not somebody who I think likes to get stuck. You know, you like to, <laughs> like I said, there's this feeling of somebody who knows how to be patient. You know how to submerge and, and uh, weigh out your options. But once you move, you move. Like, you, no, I'm moving. I'm done. I have catapulted myself into another timeline and from that perspective i do get that scorpionic energy you know you're not somebody that's clinging to the past you know how to close that out and move so all right we are going to move on ourselves into your options now so i hope that resonated for you if it did then stick around if not you can always check out one of the other piles all right so we're going to look at the wrong person first. So the wrong person is going to have earthworm energy in the reverse. We're going to put all the cards out and then we'll start talking about them. The brawler in the upright with lack of empathy and confrontation. Fear in the reverse. The sun. And finally, we have Virgo, integrity, reverence, and service. So, all right. Let's talk about it. So, pile three, how you will know that it is the wrong person. Okay. This is someone who does get stuck in their past. This is someone that does get stuck in their past and is very insecure. This is someone who might smother you. Yep, who could definitely be in that smothering energy, even with this almost looking like that smother card. This is someone that could be a bit of a hothead with the brawler as well. They could have a lack of empathy and they could be very confrontational. And I feel like it's because they are running from fear. They are afraid to look within themselves the way that you do. This is someone who lives on the surface level a bit. The number 25 could be significant, by the way. Maybe this person is 25. Maybe you know this person because I'm getting that someone here may know exactly who I'm talking about. I feel like this person has had to fight a lot in life and they just don't know how to how to do anything else. You know, they feel very 
unworthy a lot of the time. They feel very unlovable. They could have a very nervous kind of energy and maybe they do try to mask that by being sort of abrasive at times. They could be very hurtful, not just like they could, I mean, some of them could be people that get into brawls, you know, into fights physically with people. Like maybe they, they go out drinking a lot at the bar and they, they get into fist fights with people. That could be a thing for someone. For others, this could be somebody who fights with their words. They could be very intense. They could speak in a way that is very offensive. They it's like it's past bluntness it is literally them trying to hurt people to push them away basically is what i'm getting here you know i think that they would definitely look at themselves as someone that's got this virgo energy which i'm i'm getting more of the nervousness that's sometimes associated with virgo being a mercury uh sign but I do feel like they might see themselves as somebody who is just being honest, right? Oh, I'm just being honest. But it's like, no, you're being mean and you know you're being mean. And they they have a really bad inner dialogue as well, just to be very clear. I do think that this person would have a lot of reverence for you. This person could go back and forth, though, with that. Like, sometimes you could feel like they revere you and sometimes you could feel like they, they fear you or they hate you. <laughs> Honestly, I could see it oscillating between those two things. This could be someone who very much, like I said, would smother you because of how much they idolize you. You know, they really, really look up to you. They want to serve you. They want to be good for you. It's not the same thing as being good, though. All right, we're going to look at the right person for you now. Okay, sorry, the camera was really bothering me. Hmm. And I don't think I fixed it, so that's good. <laughs> All right, well, I tried. We've got the lizard coming through now, so fire energy. Fire and water coming together, very steamy. We've got the captain. Oh, that's lovely. Taking command, teamwork. Hmm, could be somebody you work with. Maybe somebody that's uh, in a higher position than you at work. Hunger. We have death. And finally, we have sextile, a combination of tension and flow, potential and a rewarding situation. So Ooh. All this orange color, too, coming out makes me really excited because it gives me energy of sacral chakra. <laughs> so, yeah, very sexual relationship, very uh, intense and passionate, but in a in a good way, truly in a good way. So we're going to talk about them. Okay. The right person. You'll know that they're the right person for you because even though you two could appear to be very different on the surface, right? So, you know, you've got, well, actually, you could kind of, in a way, you could be very complementary to one another, like uh, physically, because I'm thinking about the lizard and the crocodile. They're both, you know, um, they both have scales, right? Like they, there is some, there is some same similarity in how they look. Your person, though, I feel like is very different from you, but that gives you the potential for a very rewarding relationship with one another. I feel like you complement each other well, and you also have enough that is different to make it fun and exciting, and honestly, an opportunity for growth for both of you. This person is someone who will meet you as far as your sensitivity goes, they are someone who is equally sensitive. They are a bit of a chameleon, 
they um, a lot of people gravitate to them as well they could actually be an INFJ too. They don't have to be. They could be maybe, maybe they're an INTJ or something or an ENFJ, an ENFP <laughs> as well. But um, yeah, they could be somebody that just people are very, very drawn to because they are very magical in their own way, their own essence. They are very creative. And I'm getting King of Wands kind of energy from them, to be quite honest with you, between the lizard and the captain. They're someone who could have maybe a lot of like Leo energy specifically is coming through, but I could see Aries or Sagittarius here too. It's just a fire sign, but I was getting Leo and I feel like, you know, it's hard not to watch them and just fall in love with them. And I feel like you will find yourself feeling that way. Like you will observe them and probably fall in love with them very quickly. But you're going to notice that they also sometimes need to hermit themselves away because their energy is very sensitive too. They can get overstimulated really quickly and they need to pull back to protect themselves. I feel like you two will have this very beautiful understanding of each other's rhythms energetically. Your person is an inspiring leader. Whether they work with you and they are a leader in your workplace or they are someone who is a leader at a different workplace entirely. They are the captain and they take that very seriously. They are not too proud to delegate either. They know what their strengths are and they also are very good at seeing strengths and beauty and other people like they don't have like a super inflated ego I think they've went through an ego death to be completely honest because you know they wanted to be a better person I feel like they could also be very spiritual to be completely honest they work well with others But they know when they need to step up to the plate and like the things that they need to be able to do as well. They know how to prioritize themselves first and foremost. And it's not like a selfish thing like, oh, I, you know, I don't care about other people. Like, screw them. No, like they are someone who really cares about people just like you do. But they are someone who also knows how to prioritize their own energy and make sure that they are happy and healthy you know, I feel like they've gone through, there's a little lotus flower on this person's belly. I feel like this is a person that has really blossomed and has gone through a lot of deaths and rebirths and continues to do that. They aren't too proud or egotistical to admit when they don't know something or when they need to change. This is someone that I think you will continue to see change and you will be inspired to evolve with. Again, you will push each other to grow, but you will also flow with one another. And there will be an incredible amount of desire for one another as well. Like you two will be hungry like the wolf for one another. No, but you will. I'm um, here in hungry eyes. Maybe somebody is really into dirty dancing. Maybe your person's a dancer or vice versa. But yeah they mm -hmm, they're hungry <laughs> they're hungry and they're hungry for you <laughs> all right so we're gonna move into the tarot now so we're going to look at the right relationship and the wrong relationship and what spirit wants you to know about each person and each dynamic and give you some advice so all right so we are going to do two different tarot decks. The top row is going to be the right dynamic and the right person. So it's going to be the Cosmic Slumber Tarot. And then the Children of Litha Tarot will be the bottom one, which is going to be uh, the wrong. All right. So starting off the right, we've got the Empress. Oh, that's so, so lovely. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So with the Empress coming through, for the first energy. I mean, this is someone that you can nurture and be nurtured by, for one thing. You you could, if you are wanting to start a family, this is someone that will echo that same sentiment, will want to start a family with you. This is someone that will be able to help take care of that family with you, someone that will want to build an empire and 
and make sure that you and your children are taken care of always. This is also someone that you will have an easy time being in your feminine energy with. You know, and I feel like they will really respect your divine femininity without trying to smother you, right? This is not the smother mother type of energy. This is the very healthy kind of mother energy between the two of you. Like, I don't feel like you'll try to be mama to each other, but you will be protective and you will also let each other cultivate your own independence and help each other thrive within that. I think you will both find each other so incredibly magnetic and beautiful. It is going to be very hard to to keep your mind off of them, to to keep your hands off of them, you know, and vice versa. You will be very, very sexually drawn to each other inexplicably in moments. Two of Cups, yeah. Not only is this person going to be, you know, very, very attractive to you, but they are going to be like physically, but they are going to be attractive to you mentally and emotionally, especially emotionally. You are going to feel so safe to open your heart to them. They're going to understand you in ways that other people simply have not before. They're going to become your best friend. And that's how you will know that it is the right person. They will be more than just a lover to you. They will be your best friend. They will be the person that you want to call on a bad day and they will be the person that you want to you know scream and and run up to and tell like oh my gosh the best thing ever happened to me today like they are going to pour so much love into you and you are going to pour so much love into them and it's going to feel balanced it will feel reciprocal justice really coming through here very balanced relationship we have justice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Literally coming through. Yeah. Justice for the relationships that, that may have failed. You will start to understand why relationships in the past simply did not work. This person will feel like such a refreshing beginning for you with justice being the number 11 in this deck. you know, a new beginning. This is a person that is going to help you and vice versa. Like you are both going to help each other with balancing the ego and the soul. Making sure that you're not being conquered by your fears, but you are living beside those fears and acknowledging them and still moving forward and doing the scary things, doing the things that make you grow, make you become better people, let you live a soul-led life. Princess of Pentacles in the reverse. So this is the Page of Pentacles in this deck. With the Page of Pentacles in reverse, you know, this person's really going to help you overcome any insecurities in yourself, especially creatively. Anything with work that you maybe feel like is too big for you maybe you've always wanted to start a business maybe a spiritual business for some of you but it could be any business you've always wanted to start one i feel like uh, for someone here and you felt like perhaps you're not good enough or you don't have enough figured out this person is going to inspire you to do it they are going to back you up 110 percent and they will they will be by your side without smothering you right like they'll know how to respect boundaries they will never push past past them but they will make sure that you feel loved that you feel supported in the best way for you right they will actually ask you things like that like how can i best support you with all of this earth energy like the empress and the page or page of pentacles here but I feel like because of this relationship being so supportive, you know, being able to help you illuminate your light and your shadow with justice in a safe way, you will feel like, okay, you know what? I can go after the thing that maybe does scare me. I can reach for the sky. <laughs> like I'm getting Woody from, <laughs> oh my gosh, no, Woody from... Uh, Toy Story coming through. That's just amazing. Maybe you two will bond over 
Toy Story and Pixar in general. We've got Six of Torches. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Every every day is not going to feel like a win. You know, there are going to be tough moments in your relationship because it's a relationship and not no relationship is perfect or without battle in some way. Like, but I feel like your relationship overall is going to feel like a win. You know, you're going to feel like you're on the same team, like you aren't fighting an adversary. You know, the six of torches, your partner is going to make you feel sexy. They're going to make you feel like they help you feel empowered. They are going to be your biggest fan, your biggest supporter, truly. They're going to let you walk your own path and have your autonomy and respect that. They're going to push you. They're going to challenge you. But in a way that feels safe, that doesn't feel super combative and confrontational like the five of wands. They're very mature. Very mature. All right. We're going to look at the, the wrong person now. So we've got the Knight of Cups. Very romantic energy coming through right away from the wrong person i feel like this is a person that starts off strong they they definitely come in hot and heavy like it, they could be somebody who is very emotional who again comes off like they revere you in the beginning they they say the right things they're very sweet you could have a very sweet innocent kind of connection with the knight of cups it Definitely very attractive, but again, I mean, look at this. The Knight of Cups is holding the severed dragon head. There is a brutality underneath this. It's it's an aggressiveness underneath this very sweet, innocent guise. And it's not even that necessarily it's directed at you. It feels very much like it's a wound. Love is a battlefield coming through. I think love is very scary for this person. Yeah, the Nine of Swords, it keeps them up at night. This relationship would be quite the roller coaster, I think. It would uh, be exciting in a way, um, not necessarily in a good way with the Nine of Swords. I feel like you two would be losing a lot of sleep over one another. I feel like it would just cause a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, and a lot of anguish mentally. I feel like you would have a hard time getting them off your mind and vice versa and again it's not necessarily in a good way i think it's because there's a lack of communication here the eight of wands well i feel like they would be very quick to communicate but it doesn't mean that it's always the best communication is what i'm getting here i do feel like again there's there's something kind of uh sexy about this connection there's something very appealing but it's sort of in that this is wrong kind of appealing um yeah i feel like there is a powerful magnetic sexual attraction here and you know there could be flirty texts there could be uh hot and heavy you know phone conversations or hot and heavy just conversations in general and that's the thing that could like keep the two of you tethered together is this sexual tension between the two of you we've got the three of wands in reverse yeah so it would be very hard to move away from this person once you got entangled in them i'll just be completely honest it would be very hard for both of you to move on because it is addictive I feel like it would inspire addiction in both of you for each other and it would be very hard to unravel it. We have, yeah, but ultimately it would leave you in the six of swords state where you would be forced to move on alone and leave them in your past, the thing that they would not be able to do. It's interesting that both of these end on a six. There's an imbalance here that leaves you in a state where you have to find equilibrium in yourself. Whereas in the right connection with the right person, you are not left alone. You are together, but you are still separate in a way. Like they respect your autonomy, but they're there supporting you every step of the way. Here, you aren't being supported. 
Because they can't. Because they can't. They can barely support themselves. And I, not even like in a uh, fiscal, you know, financial type of way. It's emotionally and mentally and spiritually. Like it, like, especially emotionally and spiritually, they feel stunted. They feel stunted. And it's not to say that they are tethered to this reality forever, but they have to be the one to make this journey. They have to have the bravery that you have to move on. So, all right, we are going to end now on letters, numbers, and charms. So I hope you've been enjoying the reading. Uh, yeah, we're going to get some final confirmations. All right. So numbers and letters first for pile number three. Numbers and letters. Okay. Oh, not as many this time. Okay. All right, spirit. All right, let's see what we've got here. All right, so we've got J. This can be your initials. These can be your initials or theirs. Or can spell out a word for you. We've got P. <laughs> PJs could be significant. Maybe you're watching this in your PJs right now. <laughs> um, Bananas in pajamas could be significant because I just heard bananas in pajamas. They're Does anybody remember that show? Because I do. <laughs> um, okay, well, there's that. But um, yeah, PJs could be significant. Maybe that's like sort of what you live in. But, you know, you and your person, the right person, you're going to just be so comfortable. You're going to have these routines with each other. You know, maybe you're watching like Saturday morning cartoons. No, but maybe you're watching things together in your PJs and you just feel at home. You just feel at home with each other. H, Harry Potter could be significant. Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, okay, J. <laughs> JJ coming through. So Junior could be significant for someone. Um oh gosh. Nick 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 Okay, so yeah, somebody could have definitely bonded over their childhood TV shows with each other. Maybe you show each other like old shows that you used to watch. A yeah, but somebody could have double letters or initials was what I was trying to say before Nickelodeon came bursting into my head. Uh, AJ could be uh, somebody's uh, initials. Aha, uh -huh, this person might give you epiphanies. We have I. I definitely could see that. I'm hearing Iowa. Somebody could be from Iowa. Idaho. <laughs> We've got zero. Or O as well. But uh, if you're resonating with the number zero, I what I'm getting from this is somebody's name could be Joe, by the way. Like Joanne, Joseph, uh, Jolene. Oh gosh, the song Jolene now coming through my head. But yeah, Joe. Uh, somebody maybe like pretty women. Pretty, pretty woman. Uh, first of all, but I meant to say little women, but maybe somebody needed to hear pretty woman. So yeah, maybe somebody bonds over that film, but also little women, the book coming through or the, the film. But anyway, zero. Yes. So uh, zero from <laughs> goodness. There is a lot of references coming through. The Nightmare Before Christmas could be significant for someone because uh, I just heard zero um, when the vampire is talking to the... Yeah. Anyway, that's such... What? <laughs> anyway. Um, yes. Zero. The Fool is coming through right now for me. And I feel like this person is going to make you feel like a fool in love, but in the best way. Like, you just can't help but fall in love with this person. You just can't help it. You're going to want to take that dive. I'm hearing the song Dive by Ed Sheeran. Like, you're just going to want to dive into them and vice versa. You two are going to make this beautiful journey together. That's going to be so magical. I love that. We have the, t the number two coming through as well. So 20 could be significant. Maybe you two met in 2020 or the number 20 could just be significant in some way. Somebody could be born on the second or in February. Somebody could be born on the 20th of any month. 
someone could be a life path too as well. But with the number two, I am getting divine counterpart energies. So, you know, you are both coming into this relationship and bringing balance to each other and also learning how to be balanced in your own energy. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. We are going to get some charms now. So this box is going to get loud. If you have headphones in, please take them out or turn them down. So three, two, one. All right. Let's see what we got here. So we've got the Starbucks cup. So yeah, maybe you two um, like to go to Starbucks together. There's something about mermaids coming through. Your person could see you as quite the siren. Again, like I'm telling you, your person sees you as like a tall glass of water. Um, and they think you are so sexy. They think you're so hot. And like, they're like, oh man, I need like to take a cold shower after seeing you sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, you turn your person on a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And they you might feel the same way. I think you're going to feel the same way about them. Um, <laughs> Harry Potter. Yeah. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> um, yeah. So you could be a bit of a know-it-all or your person could be, you could like tease each other. You could talk fluently in movie quotes together. <laughs> like I could definitely see that with this, this crowd. So I, I love that. You could have Hermione Granger energy or vice versa. I could I could totally see one of you like that. Chaotic neutral. Someone could be a um, a fan of tabletop games, specifically with role-playing games and quite specifically with uh, D&D. So somebody could be a fan of... Oh, now I wish I could go back for a second, but it's fine. I can, so... <laughs> um, and, uh, critical role could be significant for someone. If it isn't, just, just that's fine. Just let me talk to somebody here is is definitely a critical role fan so hello bidet fellow critter you might have really liked captain tusk tooth <laughs> um, you yeah you know what i'm talking about you you may be a big fan of ford your person has ford energy very much so you two could totally be ford and jester and you two could joke about that very specific message for somebody but needed to be said and i am so about that right now like <laughs> oh ford um, but anyway yeah <laughs> um ford tough uh yeah you could be <laughs> a man of that that is so amazing maybe you two are gonna get like tattoos together of like critical role stuff that would be cool uh energy filling uh, energy filling station <laughs> I, I love your energy together. This feels like an amalgamation of you and your person and it just makes me so happy. Energy filling station, 90%. You two are, you're people that need a lot of alone time to recharge. You will respect each other in that way. And I feel like you're also people that don't take a ton of energy from each other. Like being around each other will actually feel very gratifying in a way that you've maybe never experienced before. It's, it's just going to be really lovely. You two could live at a distance to begin the relationship or at some point in your relationship, you might have to live at a distance uh, just with this being a little stamp. It could be, you know, they have to send you letters or something. Yeah. Oh, goodness. I'm not fast. <laughs> um, okay. So your person would be very... Slow and steady wins the race, right? They... This relationship could be a slow burn. It starts off kind of slow to begin with, and then it picks up speed later on. But, you know, your person does really love you and, and wants to be with you, but maybe they want to take their time because they don't want to, like, mess it up. Like, I just heard RuPaul say, and don't fuck it up. <laughs> uh, somebody could be a RuPaul fan. Uh, just, yeah, happy Pride Month. <laughs> like, I freaking love this. Um... Yeah, so with the turtle energy as well, your person could have cancer placements. They could have a cancer rising to be specific or a cancer sun is coming through too. With I'm not fast, I was also getting knight of pentacles energy. Well, that siren could be for you. <laughs> um, they see you as a siren, that's for sure. But uh, 
yes, Knight of Pentacles. They want to build something that's going to last, that's going to stand the test of time. So, yeah, you wish with the little dandelion. So, yeah, your person feels like you are wish fulfillment. I'm seeing them looking at you as the Nine of Pentacles, the Nine of Cups energy. You're everything that they've ever wanted. You're beautiful. <laughs> Swan princess, princess reference there. But uh, also, like, you really are. You're beautiful in every way to this person. And they would choose you every single day, every single time. I'm hearing. Yeah. They see you as their good luck charm, the little lucky cat. Cats could be significant to you. Uh, East Asia could be significant to you or your person. Maybe you have a lucky cat in your home. I feel like this relationship will bring in a lot of abundance. You will make a lot of money together. You could start a business together. We've got Hell Admit 1666. So yeah, you two could maybe you two curse a lot or like you curse around your person more than you typically would curse around people i don't know that's just something that was coming through and there was a siren again so maybe that is definitely true for somebody but you know for a long time i think you and your person both didn't look at yourself in the best light and i feel like that if it's not already shifted it's going to shift as this person comes into your life and they show you how much how beautiful you really are you know you are a beautiful chaos with chaotic neutral there over it, right? And with chaotic neutral, I feel like that could definitely be your alignment where it's like almost kind of anti-hero-esque, you know? Like you had the crocodile. The crocodile is very intimidating. They People might want to paint you out to be their villain. It's it's all too easy, right? But it's like, no, you're, but you're really a good, you, you are a good person, right? You are a good person. Your person's going to show you that. And I, I think you are also starting to realize that, but your person is really going to mirror that back at you and make sure that you know that every day, like they are going to unconditionally love you. They're not going to flinch away from anything in your past. Any chaos that you've encountered in your past will not keep them from you. We have drink lemon because you know what you did? You, you made lemonade. You know, you took lemons and you made lemonade with it. Oh my gosh, the little meme. When, when life gives you lemons. Um, yeah, that's coming through the vine. Um, so that's fun. I feel like, again, the, the things that might make you, you know, flinch and cringe away from yourself are not going to be things that your person is going to, f to feel deterred by. You know, they are going to want to get closer to you. Good luck. Again, good luck charm. Black cats could be significant for someone. Your person sees you as mystical and magical. They are not afraid of your dark side. They love everything about you. They really do. Really. That is coming through very strongly. Not a thing that they would change because then you wouldn't be you. That's what I just heard them say. So that is all that I have for you today. Pile number three. I just saw 50, 50 on the timer. So 50 could be a very significant number for you because it's coming through. But uh, until next time, I hope that you take care of yourself. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel when you do that. So thank you for those who do. If you resonated with this reading and you'd like to talk about how it resonated for you, you can always comment in the comment section below. I love seeing that and I'll make sure to respond. If you feel compelled to subscribe, I would love to have you be a part of my community. Um, for those who already are subscribed, thank you so, so much for being here with me. I cannot impart on you enough how much I love you and how important you are to my journey here. Seriously. But for all of you, again, please take care of yourselves. Know that you are so loved and that this is just guidance. You have free will. You get to choose who you want to be with. This was just something I wanted to do to try to help you in any way that I can. So until next time, please take care and love yourself. All right. Bye. Hello, beautiful pile four. If you were drawn to the orange calcite, then this is going to be your reading today. So I'm going to set that off to the side. All right. So as a reminder, we are looking at the right person versus the wrong person and how you'll be able to tell the difference. So this is not me trying to invade or tell you, you know, you should be with this person and not that person. I just want to give you some guidance from spirit. So 
This was sort of a request and sort of an embellishment of that request. So thank you for the person who requested the right love versus the wrong love. Um, but yes, this can apply to lots of different situations. This can apply to what the original intention was from this particular subscriber was uh, a third party situation where they were trying to make a decision between two people. This can also be for singles who are just, you know, curious about who the right kind of person is for them when they get back out in the dating pool. Or it can be for somebody that's already with someone that just wants to make sure that they're with the right person, right? So it can be anybody, but this is a general reading. So just keep in mind that everything will resonate to kind of give you a breakdown of what we are doing today. We are going to look at first your energy check. So who are you? Then we will look at your two options in an energy check, the wrong person versus the right. And then in the tarot, we will do the right person and the dynamic you will have with them versus the wrong person and the dynamic you would have with that person. And we'll end it with numbers, letters, and charms. So let's dive right in. First coming out for you is the raccoon. All right. So earth energy coming out strongly first. So you could be an earth sign, you do not have to be, but you could be a Virgo, Taurus, or a Capricorn in your sun, moon, or rising, but again, not necessarily a thing. You could also just have one of those houses present in your big three, or just a lot of earth energy in your chart, perhaps. What I get from the raccoon specifically for you, pile number four, is that you are definitely someone who is exceptionally talented. Usually this points towards an exceptional artist, but this could be just exceptionally talented and gifted at lots of different things, to be completely frank with you. But I feel like in saying that to you, I actually just saw somebody cringe and move away from that and like shake their head like no 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 I'm not I'm really not that talent no but you are I think you have a hard time accepting praise or compliments because there's a part of you that wants to be hidden because I think uh, I'm wondering if maybe you have Chiron in the fifth house or even the eleventh house um like maybe friends or uh groups of people have a tendency of making you nervous or just feeling like you aren't understood. Maybe your art feels like it's never understood by the masses, but I'm seeing something with Leo in your Chiron, either in the fifth house or Leo or something where you have maybe felt like you were either misunderstood or your art was not good enough or what you were doing was not good enough, whatever it is that you creatively are uh, pursuing or crafting didn't feel accepted or cherished in some way. And so I think that that was really detrimental for you at a very young age, and it could have shaped you into someone who is very nervous, who hides away a lot. Through all of that, you are an exceptional friend, though, too, right? So, you know, you know what it's like to be rejected. You know what it's like to have people make fun of you or make light of the things that you do. And I think you have persevered a lot, first of all, but you have also made it a point to never be that kind of person. You want to be the kindness that you want to see in the world. And so it makes you this really great friend for others. You are someone who really advocates for other people. You could be an INFP, maybe even an ENFP for some of you. I'm getting strong INFP vibes, though. I'll be completely honest. You could be a writer. You could be a musician. Is coming through, a poet. Someone here could read tarot. Someone here could dance. Someone here also could actually uh, be like a makeup artist or in the fashion industry of some in some way. Maybe you like to sew or make clothing, make costumes. You could be in theater. Maybe maybe you're in theater, but you are on the uh, back end of things. Like you're you know behind the scenes, or maybe you're in film and you're behind the camera. You know, I'm getting this sense that you kind of want to mask yourself in some way. Like you you almost want to make yourself out to be a wallflower. And that's not who you are, though. Like, people want to look at you. People want to uh, 
praise you. They want to give you these compliments. All right. So, but it makes sense why you are hiding yourself away. It does. I, I definitely get a sense of why. All right. We're going to look now at the rest of your energy checks. So we've got Vesta, Devotion, Sacred Sexuality, Fertility, Kundalini Energy, Dedication, Purity, Self-Discipline, Focused Passion, Diligence, Inner Spark, and Spiritual Commitment. Lovely, lovely energy. All right. So, with Vesta coming through, I feel like you are someone who people, first of all, like they can't help but notice you. You are very sexy. You're giving me Empress vibes. Somebody here could have Taurus rising or Venus rising, so Libra as well, but you don't have to, just something that's coming through. Capricorn rising is also coming through, and so is uh, Virgo. So, uh, but something about the way that you move is just so alluring. You are sexy without ever even meaning to be. People are very drawn into you. And I feel like it kind of throws you off, though. Like, you are somebody who really just wants to lay low. <laughs> um, you don't want to be noticed. There is like a slight purity to you. So I'm wondering if for some of you, maybe you have abstained from sexual contact with people you could have gone through your kundalini awakening but maybe it was solo you know like which i mean it's always solo but you know you haven't maybe experienced a sexual partner before um you could be saving that so yeah for some someone here you could have a lot of discipline not to say if you have had partners that you're not disciplined just discipline could be honestly it meant it was meant to be separate um you could be a very disciplined person just in general uh someone who is very diligent who works very hard who wants to craft high quality things um you know whatever it is that you put your focus into as far as your passion projects like you want those things to to be good enough for the masses even though you might struggle to release those and let other people see them just because you are incredibly nervous and if you do maybe you go by an alias or you're totally anonymous yeah. maybe you're learning how to be um more forthright about the artist that you actually are and you're putting yourself out there which if you are congratulations and i'm really proud of you i i definitely feel your nervousness so you're doing a good job. All right, we are going to continue. We've got the queen. And we have the mother. So I found this very intriguing. These two came out right on top of each other. It flew out of the deck. So for some of you, your mom could have been the person that was super hard on you on your creative pursuits uh and for others you could have had more of a a very loving mother but it was more of a smother mother i guess there's something with the mom coming through some of you could be moms you could be a single parent for some of you um you don't have to be just something that's coming through or motherhood could be something that you've always sort of wanted in your life. You've always longed to maybe have a family for someone here. I feel like you in general could be like the mom friend a lot of the time. You just have a very motherly energy. You are coming out with a lot of feminine energy. I will say that. So you could definitely be somebody who leans very heavily into your femininity, but you don't have to identify as any specific gender just to be very clear feminine energy does not dictate gender um it's just to say it's a receptive energy okay so always know that you however you identify is always 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 welcome here um yes so moving on with the mother yeah i i i get that you like to take care of people you know you really put other people's comfort and feelings above your own and people feel very safe with you you are very warm very warm like when people do get to be a part of your inner circle they feel very loved again you you come off like this very exceptional friend 
you are number one in a lot of people's books. You are the first person that they want to call. But I do get this feeling that you do not always see, I mean, I've already said it, you do not see yourself in this light. You do not seem to grasp just how impactful your presence is on others. And again, this could be linked back to your mother in some way. So for some of you, you could have a very strange relationship with your mom where you just never felt good enough for her. Uh, For others, you could feel like your mom sort of smothered you and didn't really allow you to fully express yourself, like tried to protect you too much, didn't really let you have an identity for a really long time. So you could struggle with identity from both directions, like whether you're on the side where, you know, you had a mom who was maybe a bit cold with you or you had a mom that was perhaps too invested in you, which I know sounds strange, but it does happen, right? That smother mother energy is very real. And I feel like regardless of what side of the spectrum you fall on, I feel like it was an extremity and it really did hold you back from your identity. And so I feel like sometimes you struggle with that. Like you struggle knowing who you are with being the sovereign of your life. But make no mistake, you are meant to be the sovereign of your life. Absolutely. I mean, we all are. But you are a very powerful person. Pile four, the queen coming through here. The number 11 could be significant for someone here. The ending of a chapter and the beginning of a new one, but specifically the beginning of something new. 111 could be a time that you're seeing right now. Could be an angel number that you're seeing a lot, I'm hearing. Like every time you look at the timer or you look at the clock like you see that every day for somebody and you've been wondering why and it's because spirit is trying to lead you towards embracing yourself more fully and embracing what was I trying to say there embracing your creativity right sexual energy sacral energy coming through with Vesta is linked to our creativity I'm getting very much queen of wands here with all of this red color coming around. You know, you are meant to blossom into this artist who really does change people's lives in some way through whatever it is that you create. You cannot begin to fathom how impactful that will be. People are so drawn to you. Spirit is letting you know that you have every reason to be confident in yourself. We have one with suppression of a star being by hands unworthy. So 11-11 now coming through with 1-1-1-1. Yeah, so one very, very significant. Really embracing yourself, your self-concept. You know, you, I feel like, were suppressed in a way, whether it was by being smothered or it was by being pushed away or controlled in a way that felt very cold but was still equally detrimental right like you were suppressed but make no mistake you were always a star pile for you were always a star and people always saw that they saw this big beautiful light in you and they wanted to control it or they wanted to protect it Regardless, though, it never belonged to them and it will never belong to them. It belongs to you and you have to start accepting your own light, right? Instead of hiding always in the shadows. The reason that there's, there's such a big shadow with the raccoon is that there is an equally big light. We have love. Love is all you need. (laughs) 
Beatles song coming through. No, but self-love is something that you could be really working on right now with all of this one energy. Love is something that could have been or could be very scary. It could have been very scary to let people love you, to let people in and see the real you because maybe you've dealt with a lot of rejection in life and you've been very scared of letting someone in. But love is the answer here. Love for yourself, first and foremost, so, so that you know no matter what, you are not alone. You will always have your own love. And everybody else's love will feel like a bonus. So let's see who the right and the wrong person is for you, okay? So... Speaking of love, <laughs> let's get into it. This bonus love. All right. So we are going to look at the wrong person first. All right. We're going to lay all the cards out. So elk coming through. So earth energy coming through for your wrong person as well. Very interesting. We've got the champion in reverse, achievement and downfall in the reverse. Isolation in the reverse, giving me hermit card in the reverse type of vibes. We've got the devil, so Capricorn energy fully coming through now. And we have the south node destined to release. So uh, that's very intriguing. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about your person that is wrong for you. How will you know that they're wrong? How will I know? Oh, Whitney Houston coming through. <laughs> you will know that this person is wrong for you because they are someone who they are driven by ego with the elk here. It's giving king of pentacles in the reverse vibes they are stingy and it's not even just with resources as far as money goes or finances they could be very well off although with achievement in the reverse we'll get there but i feel like your person here the wrong person has the potential to be a great counterpart for you which is what could draw you into them possibly but like it feels comfortable right with south node it feels familiar However, this is the kind of person with that king of pentacles in the reverse coming through that does not offer real stability here. They offer the illusion of that. This is someone who is, like I said, very driven by their ego towards achievements and success, towards you know, climbing up the career ladder, who who uh, cannot stand to be alone because to be alone would mean to be alone with their thoughts, right? You are someone who comes off as being very good in that energy. You might actually crave that. You could be very much in, I mean, raccoon feels almost similar to hermit upright energy. Whereas your person is coming in with the reverse of that. They, they don't want to stop and assess themselves. They don't want to look in the mirror. They want to point fingers at anyone but themselves. They don't have a lot of compassion for others, and they certainly don't have a lot of compassion for themselves. They see themselves as a bit of a devil. They see themselves as driven by their desires, which they are, the desire to succeed. But they're afraid of their other desires. Like that is one desire that they will fully take ownership of. But the the desire of anything other than that, they will not accept in themselves. They have a hard time accepting blame as well is coming through. This is someone that... I get the sense you will have a lot of tension with. This is someone that there will be a lot of fights. There will be a lot of sexual tension. I will say that. It's very alluring on the surface. 
But when it gets down deep, they're not going to, they're stingy, right? They're not going to let you in after a certain point because they won't even let themselves go there. The number 34 could be significant for someone here. This could be honestly a karmic for someone. And so it does almost feel like like counterpart energy. It can be very confusing when we are tangled up in karmic connections. And I feel like this connection could really confuse you. This, make no mistake, spirit gave us the destined to release the south node on purpose. For sure. Telling you, this is a connection you were always destined to release. It was meant to show you how to have compassion for yourself. Like if you have been entangled in this, you're, it's okay. It's okay. This is not your downfall. And this is not what you are destined for. You are destined for something else. With this being the south node, this is destined to release. You are meant for your north node, right? That is what we are destined to receive. So let's see who we are meant to receive for you. All right. I thought this was incredibly interesting. We have the deer. The feminine, right? This is in this deck. This is the father earth energy. This is the mother. This is queen of pentacles energy. So for some of you, you could be bisexual. You could be pansexual. Um, you don't have to be, but it's just coming through. You could be a part of the LGBTQ plus community. So happy Pride Month. If you're watching this when I upload, but in general, thanks for being here and know that you are always loved and always welcome. Always. So yeah, but for some of you, you could be interested in feminine energies. Like no matter what gender you are, you could be interested in women possibly you don't have to be. But yes, so deer coming through, the astronomer. And then we will talk about it after I lay all these other cards out. Um, we've got sweetness in the reverse, which I found interesting, but we will talk about that in a second. The child. And finally, house for cultural and family roots, home, peace, and comfort. So, so interesting. All right. <clears throat> the right person for you is also going to come through with this heavy earth energy, heavy feminine energy in general, because between house four, which is ruled by Cancerian energy, which is a water sign, which is feminine, and deer energy, which is earth energy, we have a lot of feminine energy here. Again, doesn't mean gender-wise that they are feminine. Um, but I do get the sense that they are very gentle. They are very compassionate. They have in spades what this wrong person does not have they will always meet you with love and kindness they are someone who is very connected to their intuition someone who is very respectful of the mother who is very respectful of feminine divinity someone who believes in something other than themselves which the wrong person seems to be very 3D oriented. This person is someone who, yes, with earth energy is grounded, but is also someone who believes in something bigger than themselves, who is perhaps spiritual connected to the 5D. You know, they look for answers In places that other people might not. Specifically this person on this side. I feel like you will feel an immediate difference with this person. This is the kind of person that, much like yourself, like you will finally feel a safe space with. You will finally find the person that you want to go to when you're having a bad day. Because I feel like right now you might be missing that component in your life. This is going to be that person. They are going to feel like home to you. 
This is someone that you could have grown up with or someone that you will build a home with that you will have a family with with house for they will always put you and your family first if you have children together they are going to be an exceptional parent exceptional parent this is someone that's also going to remind you to let loose and have fun and to to be a child sometimes they're going to be very nurturing very unconditionally loving and they're going to, that purity that you have, they're, they're never going to want to taint that. They are going to love and respect that and honor it and tell you, you know, I want you to always retain that for yourself. Because I love that about you. The number 16 could be significant for someone. This is the tower number and so i feel like this person could come in after a major tower moment in your life perhaps after this for some of you happens this relationship you finally having to release that and then all of a sudden this person comes in this is someone that may not always like they could actually not look very sweet on the outside or they could be, to others, they might come off like aloof or cold or stoic, but they're actually like the gentlest, kindest soul. Like they are so incredibly kind. I'm just getting like a warm hug feeling from them. They're really good at cuddling. <laughs> um, they know exactly how to make you feel better. They are very sweet. They are although they might not look like it they could have a very intimidating imposing type of look to them very regal i think they're going to be very exquisitely beautiful like austere is coming through so maybe almost kind of model-esque a little bit but I feel like what's really going to draw you into them isn't even necessarily how physically beautiful they are, although that's a bonus. I really do feel like you are going to just be like, wow, like intuitively you feel like home to me, like you feel right. And that's, I mean, what more can we really ask for, right? But all right, we are going to look at the tarot now. And we are... going to use the cosmic slumber tarot on the top row for the right relationship dynamic and we will look at the children of lithid tarot deck on the bottom row for the wrong so let's see what we got going on here all right the first card coming out <laughs> that's beautiful the queen of cups for the right relationship ah they're going to just be so supportive and like I said, just someone that you can wear your heart on your sleeve with and not feel like at any moment they're just going to grab it and crush it. Like this is going to be somebody that's so delicate and gentle with your heart space. They will love you so unconditionally and they're going to speak to you in a very nurturing and loving way. Like somebody that you are really going to be able to have an emotional connection with that you may not have ever experienced in this lifetime before they're going to make you feel just so so seen and safe and beautiful absolutely you know you might go on a lot of vacations together um but this this is someone that even like just being together you're going to feel like it's just the two of you, you know, it, you're the only two people that exist in the world. And I'm hearing a only girl in the world, like I want you to make me feel like I'm the only girl in the world. Yeah. And they will, they will make you feel like you are the only person for them ever. Very, very loyal to you. Loyal heart. That's what I just heard. The moon coming through in the reverse. Yeah, I feel like this person is going to, part of the reason that they're so right for you, other than just, I mean, the beauty that was the Queen of Cups that just came through, uh, 
they are going to help you release any con- inner confusion, any uh, like some of that imposter syndrome that you have. I really feel like they're going to help you unshackle yourself from that. They're going to help you embrace the beauty in yourself. You know, they are not going to make you feel anything but compassion and love from them. And it's going to make it hard not to have compassion and love for yourself. They're going to be such a good mirror for you, you know, even with the water here reflecting the moon. They're always going to try to shine back how how amazing they really think that you are. They believe that. Eight of Pentacles in reverse. So what I'm actually getting from this, part of the reason that they're so right for you is pile for they are never going to put work before you that is not to say like they're going to provide for you they're going to make sure that you are always taken care of you know the queen of cups nurturing energy here but they will never ever make you feel like you are deprioritized and this relationship will not feel like hard work It will feel, I mean, like, of course, there's, there are going to be moments where you do have to work on your relationship with each other. It's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows. You know, that's just not realistic for any relationship, any relationship, but they will make those tough moments feel like you are still on the same team, first of all, which is a, makes a a huge difference, but also they will make it feel like they want to be there. Like there's not any other place in the world that they'd rather be whenever they're with you. You know, it's just the two of you, right? There's just a endless expanse of ocean and there's no other human in sight. Like it is just you. It's you and them. The mages. So we've got uh, magician energy coming through here. So yeah, you are part of why they are so right for you is that they do inspire you to create. They do encourage you to create. They give you that confidence. They encourage that that confidence in yourself. They help you cultivate your creative pursuits as well they may you know pay for a class for you or they may like help you find classes or opportunities without being too imposing you know like they know how to respect your boundaries they don't want to like smother you um but they will be very good i think at communicating just how talented they really do think that you are and they're going to show that to you as well. And they really will, like I said, just help you cultivate any skill that you feel that you need to still like uh, foster in yourself. I feel like this relationship will feel so magical in moments as well. Like you can, it feels like with each other, you can create anything. You two could create works of art together. You could collaborate. But at the end of the day, like they are going to absolutely adore how creative you are and they're going to be super interested in it. Like they are going to want to know what you're making, you know, like there's not going to be any like competition between the two of you. That's not the way that they'll be looking at you because sometimes partners do that, unfortunately. Princess of Swords in the Upright yeah they with the knight of swords they um i feel like you'll have a really good banter with each other that's part of the dynamic as well you know you you'll stimulate each other mentally and there will be this push not push pull but like you two will push each other to grow like you will never allow each other to stagnate and just get restless and stuff like when that starts to happen you know you push each other to to try new things to create something new 
and I feel like you really inspire each other. You know, you could be each other's muses. You're always the person that they want to talk to and vice versa, I think. This, this is somebody that it will be very easy to communicate with. And not that you won't have moments where you have to work on that, but I feel like you will naturally really understand each other very, very well. So we're going to look at the wrong connection for you. Now we've got the Queen of Wands in reverse. Interesting that it came out underneath the Queen of Cups upright. So the wrong connection for you, the wrong person for you. Yeah, you're going to know it's wrong because this is going to be someone who does not give much to you, who will be very competitive with you, who will be very jealous of the attention that you do get for your art, but or for whatever it is that you create, right? But they will also be a very jealous lover in general. They will be very threatened by anyone flirting with you, very possessive energy. This is someone who definitely sees a lot of potential and beauty in you, but might want to tear you down because I do sense a competitiveness with them specifically. We have, interestingly enough, the Two of Cups. This is someone who honestly could be a good friend of yours or that's how it starts. This is someone who you do see as a soulmate initially. Again, I was getting karmic relationship. This is someone who you might confuse for a twin flame. They could be a false twin flame for someone. Karmic mates coming through. This is someone that, yeah, like, There are good moments with, absolutely, of course. There are definitely good moments with this person where there is a lot of love here. There is a lot of love. But underneath that is an undercurrent of just toxicity. I And I don't even like, anything can be toxic to us, but I do feel like this person is very toxic um, in this connection because they are coming at it from a very unhealed place and they're unwilling to do the work. They're unwilling to look at themselves. Truly, we have Page of Swords energy coming through. So this is someone that would definitely stimulate you intellectually. Uh, someone who is a very quick thinker. Someone who, again, though, I think would sometimes infringe on your privacy. Like they really let jealousy control them. Very, very uh stalkerish kind of energy coming through so someone who doesn't want you to forget about them someone who wants to constantly be looking at you smothering you a bit yeah the seven of swords in reverse lots of secrets lots of lies quick on their feet good at hiding right this is this is a person who has a hard time being honest with themselves. They are in a constant state of deceit because they're always lying to themselves. And so it becomes very easy to lie to others because of that. And that's not to say this person is a bad person. It's to say that this person has a lot of healing and growing to do and they have to start doing the inner work. And you deserve better. You just do. You just do. All right. The last card we have here is that, yeah, there it is, the Five of Wands. So they the wrong person is someone that is in competition with you who cannot accept and tolerate the fact that you are on two separate uh, planes of existence right <laughs> like that you are two separate entities and that your success does not alter theirs and it should not even it should not be put on you to feel like that, but I feel like they would make you feel that way or maybe they have for some of you. Made you feel badly for the, su the success that you have had. And it could be very like petty. It could be like honestly very hidden. Yeah, with this energy, like on the surface, it's like it's kind of hard for you, I think, to sometimes, I mean, even the moon in reverse coming out over this. Like I know that these are two separate people, but I feel like you're, the right person for you is going to help you untangle a lot of that and realize that this person was putting themselves before you and like wanted to be more successful than you. Like they, they craved that inequality. And it's like, 
you know, you already deal with so much, uh, so, so many self-confidence issues and it's like, they just added fuel to the freaking flames, you know? So yeah. Um, let's go ahead and end this on a good note with some numbers, letters, and charms. Okay. So I hope that overall you enjoyed it. I am excited for the right person for you, honestly, pile four. I think that they sound so lovely. They have a big heart, very big heart. All right, so numbers and letters first. So these can be your letters, uh, your letters. These can be your initials or spell out a word for you. These could be life path numbers. This can be lots of different things. Okay. We have R. We have C. Race cars can be significant for someone. We have ooh, we have V. VCR. Someone could have uh, bonded or watched a lot of like videotapes growing up. Like a lot of like I'm seeing somebody like watching like Disney films or something or just yeah like maybe you were like an 80s or a 90s baby or something. We've got Y. So someone's name could be Violet. Just came through. Uh, the wrong person could be trying to vie for your attention right now. We've got S. South Carolina coming through. We've got W. Southwest. We've got G. Maybe somebody just flew Southwest Airlines. Uh, we have N and we have M. So someone could be a game master in D and D for someone or role playing games. Somebody could be a GM. Someone could be a GM as far as like they are a GM in a, uh, a place of business. We've got the number seven. So I feel like you and the right person are going to have a very spiritual bond and you're going to notice that right away. You're going to have a very spiritual connection and it's going to feel very different from if you have experienced the relationship with the person that was kind of a karmic for you it's going to feel very different and things are really going to click into place and make a lot of sense to you which i'm very excited for somebody could be born in july someone could be a life path seven or born on the seventh of any month we've got the number two here so 72 or 27 could be significant someone could be a life path two born in february on the second of any month as well you and the right person, you're going to be divine counterparts. Like you are really going to balance each other out. Even though you both were coming through with all this feminine energy, I feel like you're both like teaching each other how to embrace both sides of yourself, feminine and masculine energy, proactive and reactive energy, which is lovely. We have eight and eight coming through. So 88 coming through. 88 could be significant. 28, 82, 78 87 could be significant as well but life path eight coming through as something significant mastery i feel like you and your person are going to master a lot of lessons together in just the most beautiful and gentle way but also like your person was coming through as somebody that may sign you up for classes or not like against your permission or will or anything like that but they may like encourage you to sign up for classes and help you do that and encourage you to become a master of your art and and to continue to work on yourself. And they're just going to be really proud of you. But also with eight, somebody could be born in August. Um, somebody could be born on the eighth. Eighth house energy is coming through. This is a very transformative love. This is infinite, unconditional love as well with the eight being the Ouroboros, the infinity symbol. All right, we are going to look at charms now. So I'm going to shake this box and it's going to get loud. So if you have headphones in, please take them out or turn them down. So three, two, one. Oh, goodness. There are lots of charms and I like it. All right. I <laughs> always love the charms. Okay, we've got the pearl earring. So... 
Hmm. Your person's going to look at you as a treasure and they're going to treasure you and your heart space. They're always going to want to be gentle with you. Your person could definitely have Cancerian placements very heavily in their chart. They don't have to, but with Pearl coming through, it does make me think that. Um, also, it kind of gives me almost like a flower vibe. So I feel like this person's really going to help you blossom and bloom and embrace who you truly are. We've got the big ponyo heart. So yeah, there's that child coming through. So you and your person could have children together. You know, you could build a family. I think you're both going to be exceptional parents if that is the case. But also, you know, your person is going to, again, inspire you to get in touch with your inner child. And I think you both will encourage that energy in one another, you know, to tap into what does my inner child want? How are they being called right now to uh, to act and interact with me. I think there could be reparenting yourself involved in this connection, which is really lovely. We have Hal's heart coming through huh, with literally the candle over here. So maybe you were drawn to the candle the whole time. Well, hey, here we go. Hal's moving castle coming through. Studio Ghibli could be very significant. Speaking of childhood, maybe you watched these movies in childhood or they just really mean something to you, I think. But with Hal and Sophie, I think that's the kind of relationship, you know, like you were meant to be together always. They're going to be so protective of you and you them, you know, like, again, talk about seeing the heart as something incredibly invaluable, you know, like your person is going to definitely see that in you and they're going to think you're beautiful no matter what. That is something else like their love for you is eternal. You know, that's part of the lesson of Howl here. So trust your gut coming through. Think again, like Spirit is saying, you know, trust your gut on these relationships. You know exactly who's meant for you and who isn't. You can feel that. And I think intuitively when you meet the right person, you are going to feel it in your gut. It's going to feel like a gut punch. Like you're like, oh my gosh, like this person is so meant for me. It's going to be hard to ignore. We've got the Hello Kitty. So yeah, cats could be significant. A Hello Kitty could be significant. But there is softness here. There is a childlike playfulness here. There's just a lot of fun. There's fun. There's freedom. There is laughter. We've got the cherries. <laughs> ch 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 cherry bomb <laughs> yeah okay well yeah. <laughs> that song could be significant for somebody um because that just came through really hard somebody could have red hair um don't have to but that just came through i just saw a person with red hair walk past me in my um in my head like visually so yeah uh i'm hearing two peas in a pod even though these are cherries but yeah like your person could be like your first and only like sexually, first of all. So that's the thing as well. But um, yeah, I feel like you, you two just belong together. You're going to feel that like so strongly, so strongly. And I think you both will bring out a lot of sweetness in each other. We've got what the duck. <laughs> you two could be very silly together, make little jokes. Ducks could be significant for someone here. Um. Maybe neither of you really like to curse. And so, you know, you use like, what, uh, what the fudge was that? You know, that kind of thing, possibly. I speak fluently in movie quotes. Yeah, you definitely could. Um, I could see you bonding over a lot of like film and media, especially from childhood. And you could, you know, quote those things together. And it's like the first person that has watched all the same things that you have, or you start watching them together and they're so open to it, right? They want to... They want you to be connected to your inner child in whatever way you can. So yeah, you two could speak to each other, have your own like made up language of sorts. We've got the little ducky again. So, oh my gosh, ducky from Land Before Time coming through. Oh yes, someone here could be a Land Before Time fan. Same. Uh, but yeah, the little rubber ducky. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Ducks really coming through very significantly. That's... That's interesting. So that just might be a sign for somebody. But uh, with rubber ducks, I'm getting like, maybe you two will take baths together. And, and they want to cleanse you, not just physically, but like spiritually and emotionally and mentally. They want to be there to, to allow you to just release. They want you to be able to just let go. 
We've got the three of pentacles. So three black cats could be significant. Oh my goodness. Three black cats could be very significant because it just jumped out of my hand. This is someone that you're going to celebrate often with. This is somebody that's going to want to celebrate you, celebrate your wins. Um, someone that you could build a friend group with. You know, you could be, you could get very close to their family and vice versa here. Someone that's going to just make you feel accepted for all of your differences. And someone that you could start a business with as well. And it could be very lucrative. We've got the compass here. So yeah, they are going to become your true north. You know, north node coming through a little bit here. They are going to be the one that you are destined not to release, but to receive, to be with. Always sleepy club member. <laughs> so yeah, your person could be uh, someone that, needs a lot of naps <laughs> um, but they also could be someone who you like to nap with they could, i definitely got a, an exceptional cuddler um they they have a very like easy um easy breezy cover girl energy no they they <laughs> that came through in a different pile so if you were resonating with or if you're you were drawn to another pile you can always check that out but um <laughs> you uh I think are going to notice that this person just you feel safe to just nap with, you know, and like, I don't know, like things are super relaxed with them. I don't feel like they are somebody that needs to constantly be going that can't be alone. Right. They they don't mind being alone. They actually like being in their own energy, I think. But they also like being with you. And I think they're going to sometimes your quality time together could be literally taking a nap like they're OK with that. You don't have to constantly entertain them. And I was kind of getting that from the wrong person. You would kind of have to do that. So we've got the Ace of Pentacles. So black cats are really coming through very strongly. So black kitties could be significant. Maybe that's a sign that they are sending you. Maybe you're seeing a lot of black cats. That could mean your counterpart is on the way. But with Ace of Pentacles, yeah, I feel like this person is going to offer you something totally new, some a, a new beginning in love. But not necessarily in the way that, I mean, this could be reconciliation energy, I guess. But I, I was getting more so that this is someone that could be brand spanking new. And this is someone that changes your viewpoint on love. You know, the things that you always secretly dreamt of and for as a kid suddenly become reality with this person. And it's really, really lovely. So that is all that I have for you today, pile number four. If you resonated with this and you want to leave me a comment, I would love to hear about it in the comment section below. Sure. Um, no, but I would love to hear about how it did resonate for you. So yeah, if it did, please share um, if you feel called to. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel when you do that. So thank you for those who do. If you feel compelled to subscribe, I would love to have you be a part of my journey here. Thank you so much for, for tuning in today, next time on Dragon Ball Z. No, anyway, um, <laughs> thank you so much for being here though, seriously. For those who are already subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for consistently being with me. I just, you all are amazing. I love you. <laughs> I do. I really do. <laughs> I really do love you. Um, man, speaking of speaking fluently in movie quotes that no one will understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Okay, anyway, <laughs> Grinch reference. It's so random. <laughs> what? Anyway, okay, okay, okay. So, yes. <laughs> what? It was going so well. Um, okay. Anyway. <laughs> hmm. To everyone that watched this pile, just incinerate in five seconds. Uh Thank you so much for being here. No, seriously, I am sending you all so much love. Remember, this is just guidance. You do not have to go any certain way. You don't have to feel tethered to any specific outcome. There's always free will. You can be with whoever you want to be with. I wanted to give you some spiritual guidance because I thought it would be helpful. And yeah, I, I hope that it was. But I am sending you so, so much love. Please take care of yourself and know that you are so talented and so loved. Until next time.